but she comes into season five after mm-hmm. Toby leaves. Goodbye, Toby. It's a great episode. <laughs> Goodbye, Toby. <laughs> it's been fun. <laughs> we'll see you to your paradise. Toby! <laughs> Toby! <laughs> That's when Holly comes into play. That's a great episode because... Dwight also tricks her into thinking that Kevin is special needs. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, you work here all by yourself? Yes. Yes. <laughs> he's, he's like... <laughs> Hello, hello, movie friends. Welcome back to the show. This is Anthony. And this is James. I'm very excited about today's episode because it's one of my all-time favorite TV shows. We're doing The Office. We're going to Scranton, Pennsylvania. We're going to go to Dunder Mifflin and talk about one of the funniest shows ever made in the history of television. I'm, I de- declare myself an expert I on- do declare. <laughs> <laughs> Murder in Tallahassee. That I'm an expert on seasons one through seven. I've seen them quite a few times. I think I've been through it like seven or eight times for sure. For several years, I would get home from work and Jim would just be like working on the couch with the office in the background. Love the office. It's just like my feel good background yeah. noise or just to, you know, they say people when you have anxiety moments watching a show that you've seen a thousand Aww. times makes you feel good. It's like a warm blanket. Exactly. It's like a warm Michael Scott but I was la- Yeah, I was late to the game with the office. I, I wasn't. I didn't start watching it until I was in college, like my freshman year. Then my roommate... And- my, in my dorm, put me onto the office. I'm like, what is this show? No, second year, I think. Yeah. I was watching it while it was airing, so I never skipped a beat with so it. So you're just too cool for school. Same thing with Breaking Bad and Game of Thrones, bro. I'm just on top of well, it. Well, ironically, despite it being one of the biggest shows of all time and most streamed on Netflix before it got taken down, is it was their prized jewel, <laughs> and now it's gone. It's on Peacock now. The Office, while it, was, while it aired, never ranked higher than 41st in overall viewers on any of its nine seasons. While it was on TV. But now uh, it's one of the biggest shows ever. Yeah, it was never a big hit while it was airing. It never was. It became a sensation like Breaking Bad once people, once it was already out. I think most of the seasons were already out. And once it was over and then it got on Netflix. When it got on Netflix, that was when it just hit the stratosphere. I think that The Office really helped Netflix build its its audience and its fan base. Because 100%. that is a quintessential show for people. People are either fans of, they either binge watch Friends, Seinfeld, or The Office. I feel like those are the three comedic television shows that, if you know someone, they're a fan, super fan of either one of those three. Yeah, I'm, I'm a I'm a big fan of The Office. I'm I'm a fan of Seinfeld, and I'm kind of a fan of Friends. You could say maybe Parks and Rec for some people, but then there's a billion other shows and comedy shows that are kind of around. They're like Always oh, Sunny in Philadelphia is one. Yeah, that's, we you know, love that one. That's on what like its 18th season. Yeah, so like yeah. there's a ton of great comedies. I mean, South Park's in that category too. But The Office, it's got nine seasons. It's 118, no, sorry, 188 episodes. I'm just so excited. I'm just going to slow down. And it was obviously Ricky Gervais created the original Office in the UK, which ran for 14 episodes. There were two six-episode series made along with two Christmas specials. Ricky Gervais is the co-creator of the original Office alongside Stephen Merchant. He's also co-creator and executive producer of every single episode of The Office, United States version. And he owns about 10% at least of you, the office's syndication equity points, meaning he makes 10% of all profits of the show, which which comes out to about over $100 million he's made off the U.S. office. And he's not he's only in one episode for a scene. <laughs> and he probably made even more than is, known, than is known for the licensing on Netflix. Probably. so, And it was on Hulu for a little bit as mm-hmm. well for a couple of years. So, And now it's back to Peacock, and they, he didn't get paid for Peacock because Peacock produced it. Yeah. So yeah. they're the owners of the show. Yeah, and in terms of his involvement, he didn't have a... A huge involvement besides owning it and the car- and like the idea and obviously, but he wrote two episodes, including the pilot and the convict episode. So those are the two episodes that Ricky Gervais, uh, act. I mean, wrote and then he has the scene with Michael Scott the cameo, and, and, yeah, the cameo in the ele- right before the elevator. And they so just he, like like each other for some reason. He's like he's like, what do you do? You know anything going on later? He's like, I don't know. He's like, well, let me know. And they never exchange numbers or <laughs> names or anything. <laughs> or they exchange names, but they don't exchange information. It's amazing. But it's, um, it's cr- like and. We're just going to go out flat and say this the US version is better than the UK version. It is, it, but I mean, the UK version had it set the foundation for what yeah. the office would become. Yeah, it yeah. changed yeah. sitcoms, it changed TV comedy the forever. format. The format, you know, the, the mockumentary, yeah. speaking into the camera, this mockumentary of an office, the most common mundane place in corporate worlds in in western civilization so create a comedy similar to seinfeld you know a show about nothing just it's friends kind of like that yeah. you know and the thing with seinfeld is it, it captured the idea of like you know you have your friends crew that you hang out with all the time and the office 
it was a new environment and a new place for audiences to look at on television because it, TV was always like cops and dramas and like you know the co other comedies like that and I don't no one ever saw like an office place environment on television before as like a syndicated television program and even though we're majority of people work in offices so I think that's why people have really gravitated to it because you know everyone like most people have like at least once in their life have worked in an office like environment so they really relate to this world yeah it's revolutionary too and before we continue the best way to support Raiders of the Lost podcast is to become a patron at patreon.com slash Raiders of the Lost podcast where you get awesome perks like podcast schedules for upcoming episodes personalized videos patreon shout outs on the podcast once a month to be immortalized forever which I think we'll be doing the next episode for top tier patrons only and then you get access to weekly bonus episodes no matter what tier you are in we also just launched our podcast masterclass online course so for anyone who wants to start a podcast or improve their current podcast use our 22 chapter 46 video lesson course to give you all the secrets behind the scenes of our show to find out how we got the access that we're at the success that we're at right now the link is podcastmasterclass.teachable.com or just go to our website, RaidersOfTheLostPodcast.com, and the link is there as well. Be sure to follow, subscribe, wherever you're listening. If you're watching on YouTube, hit the notification bell. And thank you so much for tuning in the world. Now, let's get into The Office. And we kind of were, like, trying to figure out how do we uh, even approach The Office. I'm show running this yeah. episode. So, so I gave I spent, Jimmy the reins. I spent all day gathering, like, I made a cast list on Google Docs. I, I made a bunch of great talking subjects to go over like he wrote guest my stars. script i'm just reading Basically, what he wrote for me uh i want to talk about behind the scenes stuff who, run, who runs the show ran the show best episodes we'll talk about best cold opens best michael moments best dwight moments stuff like michael versus toby michael and dating we'll go through each character the main ones we'll talk about the christmas episodes we'll talk about the conference room meetings best pranks most cringy moments. I have a bunch of different categories which, which with a ton of things to talk about. Some of them will overlap, but I think it's just going to be a lot of fun because I've been quoting The Office every day of my life for like a decade now. And we say that's what she said almost every day. All the time. Yeah. So let's let's start. I want to start behind the scenes about who created the show and like the people who wrote it and show ran. And Greg Daniels was the developer and ex executive producer of The Office. He also served as writer and director for many episodes. He portrays Fern Wingale, the yarn salesman who lives next door to Michael Scott. So basically, he's the creator and showrunner of the U.S. version of The Office alongside with Ricky Gervais. He actually also directed 13 episodes, wrote several, including the original teleplay with Ricky Gervais, and produced all 188 episodes. Greg Daniels initially hired four writers for the series. They are Michael Schur, who plays Moe's, Dwight's cousin. <laughs> <laughs> BJ Novak, who plays Ryan Howard. Paul Lieberstein, who plays Toby Flanderson, and Mindy Kaling, who Mindy Kaling, who is Kelly Kapoor. And he also got some other co-writers here and there throughout the series. And so BJ Novak as Ryan, he wrote 15 episodes, directed five, and was an executive producer on 101. Paul Lieberstein as Toby was an executive producer of 122 episodes. He wrote 16 episodes and directed seven. Mindy Kaling. Wrote 22 episodes, was an EP on 91, producer on 29. Michael Schur wrote 10 episodes, EP and producer on over 50. He also created Parks and Rec, fun fact. Oh, okay. So Moe's created that as well. That's amazing. Randall Einhorn, who's not in the show, he was just directing the most episodes of the show, I believe, at 15. He also does like a ton of comedies, like Always Sunny in Philadelphia. He's a huge part of that. Krasinski himself directed three episodes of the show. And there's just obviously a bunch of people coming in and out to direct the show who I'm not going to list every single person who'd done it. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. B.J. Novak and John Krasinski went to high school together. Yeah, New North New High School. New North High School. And um, there was this funny interview where B.J. Novak was talking about like making the show. He's like, it kind of felt like it was like a crazy dream I had where I was producing this TV show and John Krasinski from high school was starring in it with me. And it's just a, a crazy turn of events how that happened. It's pretty nuts. Yeah. But yeah, I'm sure they're good friends. And Fred and Savage directed a bunch of episodes as well. He? Yeah, because he's been directing a lot of television. He, he directed a lot of Always Sunny in Philadelphia as well. Oh, that's right. I've, you're right. I yeah. recognize his name in the credits now. Mm -hmm. So obviously the star of the show is Steve Carell as Michael Scott. And Michael Scott, you know, season one, he's a bit cringy, but also they had to change him up. We, we've talked about multiple times on the show how Michael Scott went from being the most cringy offensive boss, but funny too. To then being kind of like his character Andy in the 40-Year-Old Virgin by season two, where he's a little nicer, but more just naive and even more of a bumbling idiot. Well, what happened was the first season, he didn't. Ha there was no heart to him. Yeah. And the heart of my Michael Scott's heart is like the heart of the show. And in the first season, like you said, he was a lot like Ricky Gervais's boss in the UK version, if you've seen that. 
very similar. He just like, doesn't sing all the time and play guitar. Mm. But um, the producers watched my, Steve Carell's amazing performance in 40 Year Old Virgin, which is, I think, one of the best comedies of the century so far. And he plays, if you've seen it, he plays a really innocent, naive, like, man-child who has a heart of gold. And the audience can't help but root for him. And so they saw that performance and were like, if we make Michael Scott more like Andy in 40 Year Old Virgin, maybe audiences will like him more because they were having trouble with feedback on the show. And so Steve Carell and the producers changed the tone of the character. and That eventually changed the tone of the show. And then... Michael Scott became, he's still a bumbling idiot. He's still like offensive. He's still kind of an asshole sometimes, but he's very lovable. He can be very sweet and he has a lot of heart. And that really was the key to the show. Yeah. And he has a lot of great moments where he actually does really good things. Mm -hmm. And so like when I watched season one, it's like uh, like most shows, like Always Sunny in Philadelphia, the same thing. I would say Seinfeld isn't so much a victim of this where, you know, the characters aren't developed yet. You, you don't know exactly which directions you can go with them. You're testing stuff out, especially with the pilot, especially like Diversity Day and the basketball <laughs> episode, stuff like that. They're still, you know, the, the characters aren't fully fleshed out. And it takes a while to get going on the characters to get the writing right. What happens with TV shows is they end up writing the parts suited to the strengths of each actor. And so they off, often in times with these kinds of shows, they'll inject the personality of the actor into the character they're playing to help develop that personality on screen to kind of take advantage of what's great about each person individually. Mm -hmm. And so Steve Carell is actually from The Daily Show with Jon Stewart. Oh, yeah, he was, yeah. Like, him course, and Colbert. Yeah, so he, them, them two, that's yeah. how they started. They were, well, they, they were working together on other stuff, but they were correspondents on that show and helped co-write stuff. And then Steve Carell actually was going to do a, another comedy, like another sitcom pilot. And so he actually turned down The Office, but then that got canceled. So he took this because I believe they offered it to like Paul Giamatti and a couple other actors, but they turned it down. But then Steve Carell obviously hopped on it and he changed his career forever. He also changed his hair forever. <laughs> yeah, season one, he definitely got some work done after that because it's it's, it's on its way out the yeah, door. Yeah, it's pretty bad in season one. It's, it's almost gone. <laughs> and then in season two, it's it's pretty good. And then by like season four or five and six, it looks great. And now Steve Carell's yeah. sex appeal is like out of the, off yeah, the he's, charts, Yeah, he's dude. a silver fox now. He really is. The yeah. beard, the hair, everything, yeah. the sweet eyes, everything. G ladies and women love Steve Carell. Yeah, he, lo he looks great with the beard for sure. And then next up is John Krasinski as Jim Halpert, who is, you know, sits right outside Michael's office. He's in every single episode. Obviously, Michael Scott leaves after season seven to go move away with Holly, the love of his life, and start their family and everything. Aww. And then Jim Halpert is probably the next lead in the show. I would say him and Pam Beasley in their relationship and off and on relationship at the beginning of the show. You could say Jim is a, a kind of like a glue to the show. Yeah, you know, he's like who we relate with the most probably. Yeah. And then so I think Pam and Jim are the people we relate to the most. But Jim, I feel like Jim... Um, gestures to the camera more than anyone oh for sure he like he looks at us more than any other character does so like, i think that makes us relate to him more. like when karen points that out to him for the first time yeah, like, she's like why, why is jim always looking at the camera like this <laughs> the look i love the when, when michael ed pretends to be like jim he like messes his hair up he just starts doing the face like and he's just like shaking his head like yeah i don't care about anything <laughs> yeah, man. i'm cool, I'm cool man, man. <laughs> <laughs> but jim helper he's he's an interesting character he, he feels like a stage that we've all been in our lives where we're in this kind of not like dead end job but a place we don't want to be we're not fulfilling our potential plateaued. we're plateaued man yeah. and he's at that point for much of the show and then he starts to take his life a little more seriously and he you know he wants to be he gets co-manager with michael scott and then he goes off and starts his sports agency with uh the other characters in the, in the there's show. always like this feeling of unfulfilled potential within him yeah. that he feels about himself and you know like ryan has that great line where when he, when jim says he's gonna go on vacation um and he doesn't know where to he he's doesn't like, know he's gonna go the globe and then ryan's like jim's not going on vacation jim has the same ham, same ham and cheese sandwich every day for for lunch. Jim sits at the same desk every day. He's he's coming back to work. He's like, if I was a batting man, I would say that Jim's gonna have a nice weekend in Philadelphia. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so that's a great um character description for Jim. And then Pam's kind of in the same door as as John. I mean, as Jim Halpert. <laughs> John, sorry, <laughs> as Jim. Pam John Beasley Halpert. played by Jenna Fisher. Where she's kind of the same spot too, where you know she's unfulfilled potential. She doesn't know what she wants to do with her life. The opening of the show, the first few seasons, she's in this endless um engagement with roy, roy who's played by roy anderson david denman 
who they've been they've been engaged for like six or seven years. It's an ongoing joke between their characters and everything. And so she's trapped basically in that engagement. She doesn't know if she's ever going to get married, but you know, she has feelings for Jim for sure. But she also wants to pursue art and things that she's interested in rather than being the secretary of a paper company. Yeah, I feel like the I was always so mad with the relationship with Roy because like Roy's like kind of an okay guy, but he's a not a very good boyfriend at all. And so he there's lines he says like where he's like, she's like, oh, is this all? Is this the only Valentine's present you got me? And then he's like, no, we're gonna give. I'm gonna give you the best sex of your life when we get home. It's like that's <laughs> yeah, not what a girl wants crazy. to hear on Valentine's Day. You know what I mean? Stuff like that. But I think a lot of women find themselves in relationships that they're stuck in. You know, and especially Men, if, everyone. Yeah, yeah. And especially if you're in like a small town, you could say like Scranton, and you know the the options aren't like multiple. You know, so I think you know you get stuck. So I understand that. I you know I think we've all been in stuck in relationships that ships that we didn't really want to be in long term. Yeah, 100%. But then, obviously, Jim and Pam's relationship blossoms as they get together finally later on. But we'll talk about that later. <laughs> Let's move on to Dwight K. Schrute, middle name Kurt, <laughs> last name Danger, played by Rain Wilson. Probably one of the, the second funniest part of the show besides Michael Scott. Dwight is the most ridiculous character of all time, I think, in comedy. I love everything that Rain did, Wil, Wilson did with this character. The back and forth with Jim is so great, all the pranks and everything, the obsession and worshipping of Michael Scott is epic. It's just every episode... I just can't wait to see what comes out of Dwight's mouth. Yeah, him and Angela is great. Him and, and his beat farm and yeah. his mows and it's all ridiculous. And and Dwight, like, he is like the perfect like you need a wild card. You know, he's like the Charlie from Always Sunny in Philadelphia. He's like Kramer from Seinfeld. Like yeah. you need that wild card in the show to really help add some crazy bit of zany humor to it. Yeah, and that's what spice. Dwight does. Every yeah. episode he adds the spice. Like no, Michael does plenty, but yeah. like he need you need he Michael's the entree. And, yeah. and Krasinski and, and I mean and then Halpert and Beasley are the sides, but Dwight's the, the spices. Yeah, yeah. It's, he adds so much to the show. It's, it's amazing. I love Rain Wilson. He's he's awesome in this. And then we have Ryan Howard, aka BJ Novak, who starts off as the temp at the show and then eventually works his way to being a salesman. And then he goes full corporate, and we know the the rise and fall the of Ryan C Howard, the youngest CFO <laughs> in paper in paper, Thunder Mifflin history. And it's 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 incredibly such an ironic character. His character probably transforms the most from beginning to end of the show than anybody. Yeah, definitely, because he becomes like he just seems like a normal dude, like temping just for the money and kind of getting experience for college. And then he just becomes like kind of like a wild card, like Dwight himself, where he just gets into ridiculous situations and he becomes a criminal and everything goes to jail. Yeah, he grows a beard. <laughs> goes mad with power like whenever he's visiting back from corporate it's so funny like the pretentious attitude he has it's amazing yeah and then him and kelly's relationship is so funny how's my favorite brand and toxic <laughs> back in the end oh my him and kelly is insane ridiculous it's, it's unbelievable uh jen levinson played by melora hardin is my favorite love interest for michael scott probably besides holly is because well. of how awkward it is but like it's it's ridiculous because jan and michael they have this thing going on where where jan she's divorced and She's unhappy in her life. She's she's like a, a like midlife crisis for many of the episodes and seasons, <laughs> and so much of a midlife crisis where she decides to date Michael Scott publicly. She or, can't even believe she's dating him half the time. I can't remember the lines. It's something like, "See, it's do that and then collapse into myself like a black hole, <laughs> <laughs> or no, like a dying star." <laughs> and then, I mean, Jan and in 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 Michael are the reason for. The dinner party being yeah. so great. One of the best episodes it's, ever. It's I think it's my favorite episode. And these two actors, they're so great together. The comedy is so cringe and so ridiculous. It's like it's amazing. Like there's dude. no way that Jen ever loved Michael when you watch the show. Like there's no way that she was ever in love with him. Yeah, I was, she, yeah. It's sort of just that she's. I'm in this situation. I I guess I'll date Michael Scott. And just like how they started dating with the the trip to sandals. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I in got the, in the two photo. tickets to paradise. <laughs> Pack your bags. We're leaving now. <laughs> because he gets them for Carol. Yeah, yeah. After dating for like three weeks and, then, <laughs> and asking him to marry her. Yeah. yeah. And then doing the the Photoshop job. On his on her, on her family ski trip <laughs> to make the greeting card, skis and greetings. I, I you never went on a skiing trip with me. Yeah, it's me and your kids. But you didn't. That's my ex husband. Well, you didn't know that I was there with you in your heart. <laughs> that's amazing. But then it, Jan goes with them. Yeah, it's so great how she's trying to hide the relationship from corporate, but uh, Michael just blurts it out because he's an idiot. And then they <laughs> sign the contract of their relationship to yeah. make it uh, public for the company. And he's like, I'm gonna frame this on my wall. <laughs> <laughs> it's a contract of love. <laughs> 
Oh my god, it's so amazing. It's it's ridiculous. We'll get more on that. Uh, Daryl Philbin, another great character played by Craig Robinson, who goes from the warehouse crew to eventually coming upstairs when Joe becomes boss of Saber Company, Dunder, Dunder Mifflin, and Daryl's great comic relief from the show. We love his musical talents and everything. And, you know, I think him and Andy have a bunch of great episodes together. Like, I'm, one of my favorites between them is when... Um, Andy discovers that one of the printer's lights on fire, so Daryl had been waiting for a moment to to get back on Andy uh-huh. for something, so he starts egging him on that to become a whistleblower and everything and filming everything. <laughs> so Daryl's kind of Daryl's kind of like the gym category of where we're like living vicariously through them in this weird situation in wa- work environment. Daryl's the most reasonable person on the show. Yeah, probably. <laughs> <laughs> him and Jim, I think, are the most relatable. Yeah, and Pam, hundred percent. The who plays obviously the most ridiculous, one of the most ridiculous characters. She's the petite. 100-pound super Catholic woman who has the love triangle, Dwight Schrute and Andy Bernard. Obsessed with cats. Obsessed with cats and <laughs> pictures of babies in, in adult and, clothing. Yeah, and playing instruments. <laughs> and cats and, like, her, her her character's great. And, like, all the things that Dwight gets into with her, obviously they have the scandal where they're having the affair while Andy's engaged to Angela, but yeah, also yeah. their love when they're, they have, obviously, have a relationship, a secret relationship, have sex in the office multiple times. Mm-hmm. It's always so funny when everyone discovers that. Um, Angela, I think my best moment with her and Dwight is when Dwight kills her cat and puts it in the freezer. <laughs> <laughs> Sprinkles. <laughs> and then later on, she gets engaged to the senator. State senator. The state, state senator. senator. <laughs> <laughs> when her and Dwight go through their breakup and everything. And so she's just a great character she's as well. her, She's great because of her reactions to things in the other office. Uh, people are just like, every time she says something, you're like, oh my God, I can't believe this person exists. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Toby Flenderson, played by Paul Lieberstein. Super funny character. You know, you feel nothing but pity for Toby. Michael the Scott's show. villain. Literally, not his villain, his his punching bag. <laughs> All Michael Scott does is, is rip and roast Toby Flenderson, <laughs> and I love every second of it. Because t- Michael just wants to have fun all the time, but Toby always has to rein him in and be like, ah, corporate's not really allowed to- it's just I, amazing. I hate all the things that you choose to be. <laughs> why are you the way why that you are? Why are you here? Why, why are you here? Why are you the way that you are? <laughs> so we'll get into their relationship later on. <laughs> Poor Toby, HR. And I love how like all HR people are looked at like that besides Holly. Yeah. She's like the only non-normal, and the only normal HR. Well, she's not normal, but- They're non- the fun police, not, HR. Yeah. Andy Bernard comes in later on, I think, was it season three? three during when the, when, when the Jim merger. moves out, yeah, to the other one. The merge. So after- so season, yeah, so after Jim leaves to go to um, the other branch, the other branch yeah. after he kisses Pam, and then the the merger begins, and that's when Andy Bernard comes, played by Ed Helms. I think Andy's a great character, was a great addition to the show. We, I think the, the show needed a new sense of humor, a new, like, wacky, zany character to complement characters like Dwight and Angela and, and all of them. And it's like someone annoying for Jim to always have to deal with. Exactly. That's the thing with Andy. If you hate him, you're supposed to. He's yeah. supposed to be he's really so annoying. annoying. The first couple seasons he's in, he's very annoying, but in a funny way to make fun of. But then I think when Michael Scott left, they obviously turned... Andy Bernard into Michael Scott in a way in which I didn't love. You know, I like I think he's a strong part of the show. It was a pretty solid choice to take over as a permanent boss for about a season before Dwight became the boss at the end of the show finally. Officially. I just dis- I disagree. I don't think he worked at all as the boss. I think that Dwight should have always been the boss. I think he was always the best choice for the replacement, but they went with Ed Helms because the hangover had become such a big success. The producers were like, we should put Ed Helms as the lead. But you can't do th- like two seasons of the show with Dwight as the boss because you have to do 50 episodes. And it's like, that would, you, it, it's impossible to write that. Yeah, I guess. Dwight that... Schrute as every, you, you, that's why it's really only a couple of episodes, like the finale where he's like a, really the boss. And he obviously has that stint as the, the, the standing in a uh, regional yeah, yeah. manager when, when he uh, paints the room black. Yeah, when... <laughs> <laughs> no, the other one, not that. That's he. That's because he Michael thinks goes, Michael's getting the job. Yeah, Michael yeah. thinks he's gonna nail the promotion. <laughs> 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 yeah, they, him and Andy paint the room black, and Andy's gonna be his number two. It's great. But I mean, when Joe appoints him the acting regional oh, manager, yeah, yeah, Joe, yeah, yeah. When Saber's taking over because she needs a new boss. And then he, it only lasts a short amount of time because he fires the gun in the office. But I think it was—I think you can't do multiple seasons of Dwight as the boss. It'd be too ridiculous of a show. I bet you they, they'd run out of ideas. Like, how can you keep that up for 50 episodes? It, it would probably th- be tough. You need something a little bit more normal, I exactly. guess. Exactly, yeah. But I think what they I think Andy was a good choice if they kept the character mostly like Andy rather than half Andy, half Michael Scott kind of character. I mean, it would have been awesome if Creed was the boss. He was for a moment. <laughs> was he? Yeah, he was, he was the boss. And, like, remember he's like, 
like running the off the meeting in the conference room and he just spells a word and he's just they're just making uh, acronyms. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So in and he parks in a handicapped spot or something like that. <laughs> no, he parks like perpendicularly in the in those in this parking spaces. Uh-huh. It's re- and he throws his keys next to the door. He's like he's, 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 he's like filling up with gas or something like that. And the keys land on the ground because there's no valet. <laughs> I love Creed. <laughs> Creed might be my favorite character because he only has like one line in an episode, but it's always a banger. It's always gold. It's always the most ridiculous line of all time. My, I think my favorite one is the Halloween one where he's covered in blood. He's like, it's Halloween today. That was perfect timing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> There's so many good free ones. Like uh, I, when when uh, Ryan sets him up a blog, which re- it's really just a word document. It's uh. like creedthoughts.com. And he's like, I've read some of it. Even for the internet, it's shocking. <laughs> <laughs> and didn't he say like, he's like, I just, one day I just walked in here. There's an open desk and I just sat down. <laughs> Or he's like the last person who de- the last time Creed Brand declared bankruptcy is the last person who saw Creed Brand alive because he's like shifting identities yeah, or yeah, something yeah. like that. <laughs> I love the one where he takes a bite of uh, the potato uh, because they're trying, oh, yeah, yeah, they're yeah, trying yeah. to see what they can do around the office with people that notice it. The the betting one where they're yeah, yeah. making wagers where they're like Creed's eating an apple and we found a potato. He just takes a bite out of it. <laughs> There's so many so many great scenes. Creed's of, of so Creed. so gold. Um, yeah. And then we have Oscar Martinez played by Oscar Nunez. Another very normal character in the show. Uh, Oscar's very funny. He's in accounting with Angela and Kevin. Um, the accounting trio, yeah. Yeah, the accounting trio over there. They're kind of like, you know, it's a little mundane of a department, but, you know, I think they all add a little different flair. Angela with her uptightness. Oscar with his, he's probably the smartest person in the office, of course, but he's also a little arrogant at the same time yeah. and like a Hermione Granger kind of character. Sometimes he's wrong and he's like, really like wrong. A, like the yeah. episode where him and Michael go back and forth because Michael's right about one thing after reading a Time <laughs> yeah, article. Yeah, yeah, and he's trying to, he's trying to make him wrong. He's, he's like, like, I guess I'm smarter than the smartest guy in the office. <laughs> <laughs> And it's a great pairing Angela right next to Oscar. I think my favorite Oscar episode might be when he's faking sick. Yeah, and then yeah, D- yeah. Dwight and Michael try to track down. They're like on WebMD. What are your symptoms? Checks out. <laughs> and then when Dwight gets to his house, he's there with his boyfriend, and Dwight has with no Gil. idea. He's that... with Gil. Yeah. He's like, I knew it. I caught you. You weren't sick at all. <laughs> <laughs> and then they watch the game. To, they watch a movie that night on their couch. Yeah. <laughs> Dwight has, Dwight's in between Dwight them. Dwight has no idea that, that it's, it's because Oscar's been trying to keep himself him being a homosexual secret at the yeah, office yeah. because he doesn't want the attention he's trying to hold off as long as yeah. possible. Oh and then when God, the office so finds funny. out in the scene where Michael kisses Oscar, it's one of the most cringe-worthy Yeah, he's like, sure I'm going to kiss him. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I'm going <laughs> to do it. I did it. I did it. <laughs> <laughs> and then Oscar goes on like a six-month paid vacation or something oh, like yeah, that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. In a company. Sexual harassment, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, moving on to Phyllis Lappin, who becomes Phyllis Lappin Vance. Bob Vance, <laughs> Vance, Vance Refrigeration. Uh, Phyllis is great. She went to school with Michael in high school. She's just kind of like the uh, the sweet old lady of the crew. The, She's like the, the mom, mom of the, mom yeah. of the, the office. She's very sassy at times, but also just keeps to herself a lot of the time. She can be pretty sassy. I, l- I love Phyllis. She's yeah. a lot of fun. Just like how Stanley who sits across from her, most of the time he just tries to keep to himself. He doesn't want to be there. He's doing his Sudoku. He's played by Leslie David Baker. But he, he has some very sassy moments. And I think the best episode of Stanley is either Pretzel Day in the Pretzel line because he's like, He's like, I work at a job for too many hours, but I don't get paid enough at a job I don't like. But on Pretzel Day, I like Pretzel Day. <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> and um, and Phyllis could be dirty too. Like yeah, when, yeah. when Bob, her and Bob Vance go have sex in the bathroom. Yeah. Oh, when, when they, they go on brunch with yeah. uh, with Jim, Jim and Pam. And <laughs> They're like, do we eat it? Do we eat their food? <laughs> they come back like all sweaty. I, my family, favorite Stanley Hudson episode, though, I think is Did I Stutter? Where Michael tries to fake fire him after <laughs> Hanley tells him, "Did I stutter? Did I stutter? <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna is a fake firing, fake firing." <laughs> um, Kelly Kapoor, played by Mindy Kaling, who again was a huge instrumental part of the writing and production of the show and the stories going forward. Kelly Kapoor is a ridiculously funny character. She's in the annex. She's obsessed with Ryan. She's obsessed with celebrities. Um, like the, I love when Jim comes back from the merger. And she's like, oh, Brad Pitt and Angelina Jolie had a baby, all this and that. And he's like, oh, so what's new with you? She's like, I just told you. <laughs> that sums up Kelly. Yeah, and the obsession with Ryan and the hatred of Ryan is the most toxic relationship I've ever seen. It's so ridiculous. It, it cracks me up constantly. Meredith Palmer, played by Kate Flannery, another great character who works. I can't remember what department she works in. I don't even know. It can't. It, I have no idea. But Maybe. she's she's like the, the alcoholic of the group. She's always partying. She's like also living in the, the white past. trash. Yeah, she's like living in her past of like a raging 20s. 
20 year old is. Yeah, yeah. It's always funny. It's amazing. Uh, David Wallace, played by Andy Buckley. Corporate, we love all the interactions that Michael Scott has with corporate. David Wallace, he seems like a good guy. We'll also like moments where you don't like him that often. But I, I think overall, I, I always enjoy him whenever he's in episodes. Well, he, he's dealing with Michael Scott. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> so you feel bad for him. Yeah, he's doing the best he can. Like, when he brings Michael Scott in because he's his bridge is the only one making money, oh, yeah. and Michael goes on to that. that and, he's like, and, so, and, what, so what are you doing? What are you doing differently? David, so this is, this is listen, David. <laughs> so, never do anything. Don't say anything to anyone. To anyone <laughs> at any time for any, any reason, reason at all. At all. <laughs> What say we get spaghetti? What say we do? Sometimes I don't even know what I'm going to say when I'm having a conversation. It's like an improvised conversation. (laughs) (laughs) And then Karen Filippelli, played by Rashida Jones, she comes over from the merger as well, and her and Jim start dating, and that creates all the jealousy and Pam Beasley and Tension, the yeah. my how the turntables have because they flip <laughs> where now Jim has now she has to watch Jim in a relationship rather than Jim watching her in a relationship with Roy, <laughs> aka Roy Anderson, David Denham, who's always solid. He's he's not in a ton of the later seasons, obviously. He's here mm-hmm. and there. But it's pretty much when um Jim and Pam start dating, he kinda is just off the show for a while. Yeah. Uh Holly Flax, Michael Scott's eventual love of his life. And she is the Played counter- by Amy Ryan. Amy Ryan, who's a great yeah. actress. Like Oscar her and Gone Baby, Gone yeah. Baby Gone is phenomenal. She kills the accent. We can we can testify to that. Um, Holly Flax is just as ridiculous and um, adorable, but absurd like Michael Scott. They, I think they the writers were like, we let's bring in a female version of Michael Scott. Literally, let's find his soulmate. Well, who would his soulmate be? And it's Holly. Like, like like when she comes back after she gets moved away and they're like, oh, well, how are you, Michael Scott? <laughs> Michael Scott, you goddamn bastard. Oh, you're Michael bastard. You goddamn bastard, you. <laughs> Just go back and forth. And Jim's like, okay, okay, guys. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing around these parts? Oh, Michael Scott, what are you doing around these parts? It's, and the the voices that are always like doing Yoda and yeah. ET. <laughs> <laughs> but it's really it's, it's also very sweet because like I love the episode when Michael gets lost, but Holly's the only one who can find him because she can she knows the way his mind works and. The, the others start following Holly because she like perfectly tra- traces him based upon like something that would interest him there, and he would be like, "Oh, I, I bet I wonder what this is over here." Do you think their egg rolls really are that big? <laughs> <laughs> is the advertisement on the bus <laughs> on the bus bench? <laughs> <laughs> and then Creed's on the he's got his photo up on that the, the thief all oh, the thief restaurant yeah. and the restaurant of thieves because Michael died and he, you died and you died so much. <laughs> <laughs> um. Man, such a good episode. But she comes into season five after mm-hmm. Toby leaves. Goodbye, Toby. It's a great episode. <laughs> Goodbye, Toby. <laughs> it's been fun. <laughs> we'll see you to your paradise. Toby! <laughs> Toby! <laughs> That's when Holly comes into play. That's a great episode because Dwight also tricks her into thinking that Kevin is special needs. <laughs> <laughs> she's like, you work here all by yourself? Yes. yes. He's, he's, like, he's like, I think Holly wants to bang me. <laughs> <laughs> then she like wants to take him out to dinner. You drive your own car? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm, you're, I'm really proud of you, Kevin. <laughs> Who's the actor who plays Kevin? Uh, that any- is, oh, what's his name? Um, oh, sh- I didn't have him on the list for some reason. I keep, yeah, but he, Kevin's amazing. Kevin Malone is so funny. And have you ever, have you ever heard that actor speak outside of the character? I, he's been on like a bunch Brian of- Brian Bumgarner. He yeah. actually has an office podcast. Yeah, he's, I've seen the podcast and like hearing him speak, he doesn't, he doesn't sound at all like Kevin. He just speaks like a normal person. Yeah. And it blew my mind the first time I saw it. I was like, oh my God, this is what he really sounds like. Yeah, Kevin's awesome character. I think he has one of my favorite cold opens, which is the Kevin spills the Kevin's- the chili. The chili all over the floor. <laughs> I don't think I've ever laughed so hard in my life. The first time I saw that, Funniest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> he's like, it's it's the one thing that I do really good. <laughs> he's like trying to scoop it up off the rug. What, doesn't he say that he does like the Goodfellas method of, of slicing yeah, the garlic like with yeah. the razor blade? Yeah, yeah. Oh my God. But Holly comes, uh, Holly for an, another second, she comes in season five, then she's she gets pushed away because David Wallace finds out about their relationship, and then she comes back season seven. Mm-hmm. Um, Erin Hannon, played by Ellie Kemper, she comes about halfway through the series. Great character, super funny. Another ridiculously wild, eccentric character to throw. Yeah. And she replaces Pam as secretary when Pam becomes a salesman. Um, Todd Packer, played by David Kochner, he's in 
probably like a handful or maybe a dozen episodes as just side character uh, moments. You've seen him in Anchorman. But um, yeah, he's he's a super funny actor. He's got so many great moments. He's like the most offensive character <laughs> in the history of like TV probably. <laughs> um, we have Nellie Bertram who comes about halfway through the show when Saber is created and she comes later on when Robert California takes over. Mm-hmm. She was played by Catherine Tate. Um, I like Nellie. I'm not a, like a huge fan of her character. Yeah, I was never a big know, fan. I, I was just never a big, a big fan of the Saber storyline yeah, at all. Those new characters like uh, like Pete and Clark, yeah, yeah. Nellie, not eh, I'm like lukewarm about them. Yeah, That's, I'm not a huge fan of like half the second half of season eight and season nine. Who's the tall guy? What's Greg? Gabe. 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 I, I, yeah, Gabe was super Gabe's really, funny. Yeah. B- b- to make fun of. You yeah, know? very creepy. <laughs> uh, Hank Tate, who plays. The scre- remember the Gabe line? He's like. For some reason, people keep asking me, are you guys still dating? <laughs> <laughs> About Erin. Or I love when, when Erin breaks up with her during the uh, the other Dundies, and she's like, Hug- it's, hugging you is like hugging Skeletor or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> like a, it's like hugging a skeleton. <laughs> <laughs> Hank Tate plays Hugh Dane, the security guard. Oh, yeah, yeah. He's probably in like a dozen episodes, something like that. Mm. And then Robert California is probably the next biggest character to cap it off, ch- played by James Spader. Great replacement for the interim. <clears throat> yeah, for like a, a season, he's, he's very yeah. solid. Robert California, he's pretty, I think he's a pretty good character. I think he was really funny. I liked him. Um, then we have a bunch of great guest stars, like Amy Adams as Katie during, the, I think the episode is the Hut Girl episode, and she also has a love interest storyline with Jim for a little while. She's on Booze Cruise. Yeah, Booze Cruise yeah. in a couple episodes. <clears throat> Excuse me. Will Ferrell as D'Angelo Vickers <laughs> coming in when they're after Michael's leaving, so they're trying to find a new manager. So the, first those, of all, the name D'Angelo Vickers. I'm sure Will Ferrell came up with that. Yeah, hundred percent. But like, the, the, he's so funny. Yeah. Like, he's like three episodes yeah. he's in. It's it's, it's, the, it's so sad how short it was. The first episode, it's it's Michael's like it's his last couple of weeks. He's like drinking scotch in the office, and then he's training D'Angelo Vickers. And yeah. D'Angelo at first he's like very shy, but then he becomes like the most most ridiculous character. Yeah, but when they meet in the bar, they're supposed to meet at a bar, and then but Michael and D'Angelo start just chatting, thinking they're strangers. They start chatting at the bar, and they're both like, "Oh yeah, I have to meet like a new coworker here, and we're just gonna like chat." And then they both get, and then um, D'Angelo's like, "I'm gonna call him. I'm, I don't know where he is. He's, he's pretty. He's pretty late." And then Michael's like, "Go ahead, go ahead." And then D'Angelo steps aside and makes the call, and Michael's phone rings. And Michael's like, "I gotta go take." I gotta go. <laughs> then they both start talking to each other on the phone. He's like, "Where are you? Oh, I'm already here. Where? I'm at the bar. Really? We're at the bar." <laughs> and then they finally realize <laughs> they look at each other. They're like, "Oh," and they're like, "I'm at the bar." <laughs> <laughs> Just a couple of fucking but boneheads. D'Angelo Vickers is so crazy because the overconfidence of the character. Yeah, yeah. It's just as bad as Michael Scott in like season one with the basketball episode, I mm-hmm. think. Like the stuff with the juggling where he, he <laughs> juggles with no no balls and he's like juggling off people's faces. <laughs> like, do you trust me? Because I trust you. <laughs> um, the basketball, obviously, where he says he can dunk and he... <laughs> <laughs> gets sent off to the emergency room. <laughs> Everyone's trying to get on his good graces. He's got like the club, like the the clique that can go inside his office to talk in the small <laughs> meetings and the, like the secret society. It's it's ridiculous. He's such a fun character. Oh, I love it. And then Idris Elba was a great interim boss as well as Charles Minor. So not a, yeah. So yeah, he was filling in with David Wallace as part of corporate yeah. to like manage and help help manage Michael. That's yeah. what it was. So David Wallace wanted to keep Michael under reign. So he sent David, he sent Charles Minor there to improve Michael's managing style, which obviously doesn't go well because that eventually <laughs> leads to Michael leaving Dunder Mifflin, starting the Michael Scott paper <laughs> company and stealing a bunch of big clients. <laughs> and I, Charles is great. I, and I love the scene because all the women are in love with him. And then he's he goes to the camera, he's like, I'm aware of my effect on women. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like Angela steals his scarf. <laughs> so like go find him in the parking lot. Charles! Charles! <laughs> and I love when um, the opening of that episode, uh, Jim wears a tuxedo to yeah. work because Dwight sent that memo about dress code. And he's like, and him and Michael are talking about. He's like, oh, you look for. He's like, oh, look, it's, I'm all about being classy. And Michael's like, you look very sharp, really classy. And then the, the, he didn't tell him that the corporate boss was coming, Charles Minor. He's like, he's like, Michael, I wish you would have told me that the boss was coming. He's like, why? You look sharp. <laughs> and Charles is like, tuxedo first at work. 
And yeah, unfortunately, Charles never took him seriously again after that. Yeah, they get off on the wrong foot. Like, yeah. and then Dwight becomes Charles' like right hand yeah, man. Yeah, number two. Yeah. And then David Wallace is in the office too, and he becomes and Jim becomes like his right hand man. And this is when they're trying to get the clients back from from Michael Scott Paper Company. And there's a great scene where they're all four of them in the in the conference room, and uh, Jim and David Wallace are wearing the like the exact same outfit and same colors, like a blue shirt with a tie. And then Charles and Dwight are wearing like the same like yellow <laughs> shirt with a tie as well. So like they have the same outfit. But then in that, it's that moment where Charles like starts to realize that Dwight is the biggest idiot because he starts coming up with these crazy plans to get the clients back and to like to like kill Michael or something like that. He's like, "What if we send dogs or so, or something?" I can't remember what it was. And then he, Charles looks at him, he's like, "Are you an idiot? Like, he's like what's the matter with you?" Um, some other great guest stars include Timothy Oliphant as Danny Cordray, who mm-hmm. is the very attractive traveling salesman of the crew, who's in like two or three episodes. Yeah, just a few, yeah. We actually, he was just on our fl- our flight to Boston on JetBlue. He was sitting in coach. Timothy, if you're listening, we saw you. And we didn't even have to have see your mask down to recognize you, man. That hair. That hair. We saw the hair. We're like, that's a movie star. And it's Timothy Oliphant. Um, <clears throat> Danny Cordray is super funny. And then we learn about, like, the past date that he had with Pam mm-hmm. Beasley. Yeah, yeah. But uh, originally, it's, and it's confusion about why they didn't go on a second yeah. date. But uh, the first time he's in the show, it's because... He's going after a client that they want, and so Jim and Dwight need to call Michael in to get him there. And they're like, oh, my God, Danny Cordray's here. <laughs> and then Michael hires Danny Cordray to be a salesman at Dunder Mifflin. Mm-hmm. And he's, like, in the office for, like, an episode. He's like, I got to get the hell out of here. <laughs> he goes back to traveling salesman. And then we have Kathy Bates, who comes on as Joe Bennett as the head of Sabre. Kathy's a great actor, super funny character. Uh, Michael becomes uh, a little obsessed with their first couple episodes. But, yeah, I love Kathy Bates in that role. Yeah. Ricky Gervais has one scene as David Brent reclaiming his role from The Office UK. Obviously, we talked about that earlier where he bumps into Michael outside the uh, elevators. Then a bunch of other small guest appearances, Jack Black, Jerome Bettis, Jessica Alba, Warren Buffett, Jim Carrey, Will Arnett, Ray Romano. So tons of great guest appearances. There are for sure plenty more. How about we go on and head into our intermission since we still have so much to talk about. We might as well just take yeah. a little fun break and Let's slow do down it. a little Let's bit do because it. I'm already starting to lose my voice. I'm so excited. Yeah, I mean, your your blood is pumping, man. Man, I'm 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 jacked up. Like I blacked out the last 45 minutes. I don't even know what's going on. <laughs> it's actually Thursday. All right. Let's begin with our movie quote competition. What do you got? It's the first time I've ever seen you look ugly. And that makes me kind of happy. Huh. Um I don't know. I, I'm stumped. Bridesmaids. Oh, good one. Kristen Wiig. Nice one. It's when, uh, what's her name's crying in the car. Mm-hmm. Maya Rudolph. Okay. All right. <clears throat> Here's my quote. What the F are you even doing here? Sir, I got lost on the way to college, sir. Animal House? Want me to say it again? Yeah. What the F are you even doing here? Sir, I got lost on the way to college, sir. Um, <clears throat> Apocalypse Now Jarhead Jarhead Oh I figured it was a war movie The second mm-hmm. time I heard it Good one Guess this movie release year Little Miss Sunshine 2007 2006 Ah oh, Six Here's my movie release year Hesher Ooh I like this movie Yeah Rain Wilson. Rain, Rain Wilson's in it 2000 and Was this before Yeah I'm gonna 2010. Yeah, nice, nice, good guys, got got good it, man. one, man. I'm pretty good with JGL years. You, you know your your JGL stuff. I'm a man. big fan of JGL. He's, he's an awesome, he's an awesome actor. All right, movie pop quiz time. What war movie is John Krasinski in? Jarhead. Yeah, I, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he's uh he plays a, a clerk. Yeah, you got um, that. Wears those thick glasses. Yeah, yeah. You that's that? I think that's why he was cast in. <clears throat> Sam Mendes' film with uh, Maya Rudolph because they worked together in Jarhead. You got that super fast, man. I know that really Pretty well. smart guy. I love That's Jar- a really good movie. I love Jarhead. Didn't Deacon shoot that? Of course he did. Yeah. Yeah. He's Sam Mendes' guy. That oil field shot. Yeah. All right. Here is my quiz. What George Clooney movie did John Krasinski star in? Oh, this is the um the football one. What's it called? What's um, it called? Oh, crap. Oh, man. Ah. Oh. It's a plural you're gonna singular hate, word. You're going to hate it when you when you find ah! out. <laughs> ah! Loud noises. <laughs> I declare bankruptcy. I do declare. Um, crap. I can't remember the name. 
Leatherheads. Leatherheads. Yes. Got yeah. It. You got it. <laughs> wow. Nice one, man. Whew. I, almost, I was going to be sad if I got all mine wrong. It just popped into your Aren't head, you huh? Two for three. Yeah. Look at that. Two for three. Not all bad. right. How are we doing for haters? We got any good ones? Or any, any good ones? Any not... authentic haters? We got a couple fun ones. <clears throat> we haven't had that many real haters the last few days, well, honestly. We actually haven't really been digging, though. Yeah. I haven't been digging. We've, we've been, been, we've been, been pretty very busy. busy. We've got a lot going on, guys. We have been very busy. But um, I got some... Sorry for clearing my throat so much. Got this episode, everyone. I'm losing. I'm just. Already, I started talking too fast. I think. <laughs> I got a good one from Matthew on our Empire List episode. The good, the bad, and the ugly as the best Western ever made. You've clearly never seen Cowboys and Aliens. Unsubscribed. <laughs> Thanks. Matthew. I couldn't get through Cowboys and Aliens, man. I don't. I don't think that's. I actually a, liked it. I, I didn't like. I it. I liked it. I not, thought it was. Not, I thought it was pretty good. I thought it was pretty corny. I, know. I was disappointed because the idea is really cool. It's a cool idea. I thought, I mean, I don't think it's a great movie, but I, I thought it was pretty cool. I thought it was pretty good. You know, John, John Favreau's a good director. I th- no, he's a great director. I, it's the script. Why part. do you hate John Favreau so much? <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. That's our only hater. There weren't that many. All right. That's um, a good thing sometimes. Supporter of the week, five star review from Say It Ain't Lewis. Great commentary. These guys are great. Love their commentary and takes. Lots of fun. Simple review. Love it. Thanks so much for the review. I also have another supporter of the week. Who we got? I have to shout her out. Oh, I so, know what you're going to say. Yeah. So we had a amazing day today. And this we recorded in advance. So today is December 1st. It's December 1st. And so everyone got their Spotify rap playlist. Um, and so you saw if you have Spotify, who your top artists are, who your top musicians, what your top songs are. And we got so many amazing messages and story mentions from our fans. It must have been like 150 yeah, or it's, something. Yeah, it's unbelievable. I couldn't even keep how, up with it today. Like how many of y'all... We we make your the top of your list. It was just like such an amazing day. And most listened to podcasts, yeah. and it says the, it says the minutes listened. Yeah, so we made a contest to see who who had the most minutes listened to our podcast, and the winner of the pod, uh, the winner of this contest, where we sent them some free merchandise. We sent them a beanie, and the winner was Alice Lucy, and she logged in over eighteen thousand minutes listening to our podcast this year alone. So that was just an unbelievable thing to see. Thank you so much, Alice. We love you. Hope you like your beanie when it gets to you in the UK. That's incredible because yeah. I had 14,000 minutes of Hans Zimmer listened to, yeah. and I listen to Hans Zimmer every day. Mm-hmm. I know podcasts are obviously longer like, format, long format yeah. but like I also listened to Hans Zimmer's Man of Steel sketchbook track 109 times in the last <laughs> year, this year. So it's pretty incredible that Alice listens to us that much. We also had a bunch of other people. Like there had yeah. to be a couple dozen 13, that had, 000, had over ten thousand yeah. minutes listened to. Bunch of thirteens, bunch of eleven thousand. It's, it's, it's funny because there's the thirteen thousand minutes uh, logged, and Alice actually responded to us saying like, "Oh, it's actually kind of close." I'm like, "I guess," but like you're there's, you're still five thousand above yeah. them. Like it's not even close. Yeah, absolutely insane. But we actually decided to do the top three. We're gonna send merch to so. But she, she was number one, but the other two, you know who you are. Yeah, so thank you so much to everybody who sent us those screenshots and DMs and shared us on your stories and everything and Twitter and Instagram saying where we are in your your Spotify wrapped top pl- p- uh, podcast, most listened to, listen to me fumble through words all day. And we just really <laughs> appreciate it. It was overwhelming and we got a little emotional. It was very it was very touching and sweet and we feel very grateful to have so many fans around the world who listen to us all the time. It's it's incredible. We love you all. All right, on this day in film history, today is Thursday, December 9th, in 1965, a Charlie Brown Christmas, the first Peanuts animated special features on CBS in the US. In 1997, Tomorrow Never Dies, the 18th James Bond film starring Pierce Brosnan premieres in London. Great one. In 2005, Brokeback Brokeback Mountain is released. 2017, The Last Jedi premieres in Los Angeles. And happy birthday to the late Kirk Douglas, who I believe passed away last year, Mm -hmm. uh, Judi Dench, and John Malkovich. And Anthony and I have the same streaming recommendation. It is the new Beatles documentary, which just got put out by Peter Jackson, Get Back. Yeah, it's amazing. I I watched a half hour of it today. I want to go back right now and watch it. It's incredible. You want to get back to it? Get back. (laughs) It's incredible. It's eight hours of them, of of watching them in a studio make music. It's really incredible. It's engrossing. It's it's an addictive show. It's it's incredible to see, you know, how talented these dudes were and to appreciate what real music was because obviously most of the music today isn't real music. Made on a computer. People auto-tuning and barely... Like twelve people writing a song that has thirty lyrics versus, yeah. and then a producer making the beat. Yeah, to watch the mastery of instrumentation and singing and rhythm and lyricism of these men in in this band, the Beatles, and changed the music forever and what they did. It's incredible to see like 
be in the rooms with them while they're creating songs like out of thin air. It's yeah. in, it's incredible. And it's all this black and white footage that Peter Jackson colorized. And so it's really sensational to see these images in color. Uh, it's such an amazing documentary. I'm only an hour into it, but I can't wait to finish it. Yeah, so for anyone who doesn't think the Beatles are the greatest band of all time, just just tune into half hour, but you'll be like, okay, I'm convinced. <laughs> Even if you don't like their music, you just got to respect, respect it. Respect yeah. the incredible talent and it's it's otherworldly talent really mm -hmm. before we move on to the rest of this episode though i have to tell you all about movieposters.com the number one place to get your posters online today head on over to movieposters.com and use our special promo code raiders10 to get 10 percent off your order today the holidays are coming around the corner there's no better gift to get the film lover in your life than an awesome movie poster of their favorite movie or television show they have all sorts of sizes framing backlighting, whatever your poster needs are, they can handle it as well as pretty much every movie and TV show imaginable in their arsenal. Again, head on over to movieposters.com and use our special promo code Raiders10 to get 10% off your order today. And our other amazing sponsor is special for you screenwriters or wannabe writers out there. Arc Studio Pro is the most efficient, streamlined, and elegant screenwriting software on the market. They have teamed up with us to offer a very special deal of $30 off their membership. If you follow the link, arcstudiopro.com slash Raiders. They have all sorts of amazing features like the plot board, which allows you to easily organize your plot points and acts with this really cool digital flashcard drag and drop system. You can also add apps for your desktop or phone, online collaboration with co-writers, so it's like you're writing with Google Documents, super helpful outlining tools, revisionist management, and links to feedback. I use Arc Studio Pro every single day. <clears throat> I use Arc Studio Pro every single day for my screenwriting needs because it is the best software out there. Again, head on over to arcstudiopro.com slash Raiders to get $30 off your membership and start writing today. All right, let's get back into our episode of The Office. So I figured from here on, I made a couple different things to talk about, like best episodes, best this, cold open, stuff like that. So it's just a list of things episodes and segments and, and topics. points and yeah. topics that I curated. It took me all day to do this. He was grinding on his laptop. I saw him. I, I was going to edit the episode for the that's coming out, uh, that came out the other day, but I, I just did this instead. So It's a pretty good job. I saw you just working on a computer eating lasagna all day. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't eat lasagna today. That was last night. <laughs> I had chicken piccata today. Oh, yeah, chicken piccata. Get out of stuff. here. All right, so the first thing I figure we talk about is best episodes. And so I put like 20, 25 together. Obviously, it's impossible to talk about every single episode of The Office in this podcast. There's 188 of them. There are people who have podcasts just doing that. Each episode is an episode yeah. of The Office. So we don't have time to go over every episode. We can't even do like a minute on each one. That would be so long. So I, I just picked like 20, 25 that I really like. And obviously, you'll hear some of your favorites, but I think you'll also hear some of them that might surprise you. So Ooh. obviously, Dinner Party... One of the funniest episodes, maybe the most common pick to be a favorite of people's. Yeah, it's just so incredibly written. And the scenarios, finally being able to see like uh, Michael's apartment with Jan. It, there's just, it's so awkward. It's so cringe. Everything from like Jan drunkenly dancing to her, that, that kid's Hunter. music, Hunter's music. And uh, at least he's a musician. <laughs> at least he's an artist. <laughs> and then she's trying to like drag, drag Jim up to dance with her. <laughs> and he keeps just like just fighting against her. And then, and then this, the tiny TV that attached to the wall. And then Michael's just like, I love this TV. And he's like, <laughs> he's like, if you can't get too close, if you, if you're far away from it, it pulls out of the, of the wall. And it's like a seven inch television. If you've seen LCD. the LCD, yeah. If you've seen the bloopers, you, I don't know how they got through this episode. I don't know how Krasinski could keep a straight yeah. face for all the takes. <laughs> but the dinner party, the way it opens up, is just hysterical. Where Michael tricks everybody into thinking that they have to work late for corporate. He's like, he calls. I'm gonna call corporate now. He's in. He's, <laughs> he's like, we don't want to work. <laughs> These people are my friends. <laughs> all right, we're not working anymore. <laughs> he's like, everybody. I told corporate where they could shove it. And then, and then he goes to Jim. He's like, uh, what are you doing tonight? Uh, so you said you didn't have any plans. <laughs> and then dinner party starts. It's great. You know, Dwight comes, Andy comes, Angela's there. 
Dwight brings a person in a wine glass. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's his old babysitter. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's a ridiculous episode. We really can't even spend that much time. The beer we, sign. Yeah we're, yeah, we're spending too much time on yeah. it already. But dinner party, I'm putting it on the list. Yeah, the Dundies, the first one is really great. It's uh, in the second season, mm -hmm. and this is where Pam gets drunk. But Michael sends out all of his Dundee awards to everybody, and I love the line from Oscar where it's like, "The Dundies are like going to a kid's birthday party." You're not having any fun, but you're just happy that the kid's having fun. And there's nothing for you to do there. <laughs> great, great episode. Amazing. The injury. This is where Michael Scott burns his foot on his George Foreman grill <laughs> because grill. he likes to wake up to the smell of crackling bacon. <laughs> he wraps it in bubble wrap. Yeah, he, calls, he calls on the phone. Then he starts acting like he is like a disabled person, like falling in the stall in the bathroom and then taking over the conference Crutches. Room. Has He has Ryan go to Boston Market to get him the chicken with the yams. He's like, did they have the yams? <laughs> <laughs> he hits the wall. With the, I love when he hits the windows with the crutches asking for Pam. <laughs> and then this is also the episode where Dwight gets his concussion because oh, yeah, yeah, he, yeah. he drives into the telephone pole going to pick up Michael. And then obviously the great scenes at the hospital where where, where <laughs> Jim's like, and Michael's like, what do I put under reason for coming to the hospital? <laughs> and he scratches his eye. He's like, did you put bringing somebody to the hospital. <laughs> and then he's like, tries to put his foot in the MRI machine. <laughs> yeah, because he wants it to be, he wants it to be like yeah. broken. He asks the doctor, he's like, what's worse, a foot in a foot injury or a head injury? A uh, head injury. <laughs> what, if, what if the foot's been severely burned? <laughs> great, great episode. Oh my God. And the coup, this is the episode where Dwight tries to betray Michael and become regional manager of Dunder Mifflin. Oh, my God. So he meets up with Jan at a, an outlet store, <laughs> like diner. <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> like the cafeteria. And she, he's like eating the pancakes. He's like, so you everything's on the table now. Are you going to give me the job or not? <laughs> and then uh, <laughs> Michael finds out because Jan calls him. The correct is And then Dwight comes, comes back to the office because he went to the dentist that's two hours away. He's like, he's like, hey, you want you want an M and M? They're good. Aren't you not supposed to be eating any candy after going to the dentist? <laughs> What's your dentist's name? Crentis. <laughs> Sounds an awful lot like dentist. Maybe that's because he wanted. Maybe that's why he wanted to become one. That line when Dwight says that, he's like fully convinced that. Oh, I got him. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> he like smiles when he says it. But then and then Michael tricks him into thinking that he is manager. It's a hysterical moments. Amazing. It's so funny. And then, and, then, and then Scott's taunts is one of my favorites. It's so good. It's this thing that Michael made a promise to a bunch of inner city kids in an elementary in school. an elementary school to pay for their college like a decade before yeah, as if they passed if they graduated high school with grades with good grades he would pay for all of their colleges and now the time has come i love in the office when they bring it up and then stanley just starts laughing He's like, <laughs> 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 hey mr scott what, what you gonna, gonna do what, what you gonna, gonna do make, make our dreams come true <laughs> <laughs> so cringy so, so when cringy. he watches all of their performances, he's just sitting at the desk and he but gets you them do, look on his face. You do see the heart that Michael Scott has yeah. because even though he's an ignorant idiot, he made this promise out of the goodness of his heart. But he also thought he would be a millionaire by yeah. now. <laughs> he's a fucking idiot. <laughs> he's the biggest idiot on the planet. <laughs> it's funny. He's like, I have less money than I had then. <laughs> and I'm 40. <laughs> he's like, he's like, all right, uh, online school is a viable option. And to do that, you need a laptop and I have a battery for every one of you. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. They're lifting. Him. <laughs> <laughs> and poor is it um Aaron that goes with him? Yeah, yeah. Aaron. Oh my god. And when poor... they're doing the song, she's like dancing. Yeah, to she's it like too. having a great time. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, next up, we have basketball. This is season one. I was down in the um in the in the warehouse. The warehouse. Yeah. This is when uh Michael challenges the, the warehouse crew to a game of basketball, and then he gets the squad together. Like he gets Stanley, Jim. He won't let Phyllis play. <laughs> and then he gets down there and he's warming up. He's got like, the, the sleeveless shirt, the, the shorts. <laughs> the headband. He's like tapping his hands with his knees. He's dribbling on his knee. He thinks he's like a globetrotter. It's just so, <laughs> it's the worst player of basketball in the history of the sport. It's like he's never played before. Yeah. That's how bad he is. Like he throws the ball like over the hoop into the outside, <laughs> stuff like that. It's, it's really funny. It's pretty cringe too. And next up, we have Stress Relief Part 1 and Part 2. Amazing episodes. Yeah, this one I think has one of my favorite moments in the show. This is where they're doing the CPR and the dummy. And the sh <laughs> the, the, it's in the conference room. And then everyone just starts going crazy. Like, Michael's doing the beat to stay in Alive. And then Andy starts singing. Then Ellie gets up and Kelly starts dancing to it. And then Dwight cuts off the face and does the Hannibal Lecter. Hannibal Lecter. Hello, Clarice. <laughs> 
And this is also when Stanley, Stanley has, has his heart attack, heart attack yeah, and stuff yeah, like yeah. that. There's a, there's a ton of great moments yeah. in this two-parter. The merge is a great episode when everyone from the other branch comes with Jim, obviously, but then this is where Andy comes. And then there's three characters who quit on that day because it's so awkward with Michael. Yeah. Really funny episode. Then we have Threat Level Midnight, which is the screening of the film that Michael Scott uh, filmed over the uh, pa- several years. Yeah. <laughs> and all the cast members had different roles in the movie, and it is so ridiculous. And Jen's like, oh, he finally finished it. Oh, good for him. <laughs> good for him. Yeah. And everyone's in it. And it op- the episode opens up in Threat Level Midnight where the assassin comes to take him out, but he dodges the bullets, then yeah. he kills him. He's like, clean up on aisle five. Michael's scarred. <laughs> <laughs> and then, and then like, he thinks, Dwight th- thinks he's a robot, then Michael's like, he's not a robot. I never told him he's a robot. <laughs> and then at the end, he is a robot. He's like, oh yeah, he is a robot. <laughs> <laughs> so many great, great moments, like Jim's gold face, the villain, <laughs> Oscar in the speed skating, he has to strangle. <laughs> oh my God, it's so it's, funny. It's ridiculous. And he hits the hockey puck into space. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, <laughs> then we have safety trading. Really good one because the warehouse is actually dangerous, and that's when it opens where Daryl's like, we had an incident recently, and he's on crutches, and he's like, I was climbing a ladder on a shelf, and a co-worker who I will not name comes over, and then it cu- cuts to Michael Scott. He kicks the ladder and says, hey, Daryl, how's it hanging? <laughs> <laughs> but this one's also like a, a midlife crisis episode for Michael because he also goes on the roof yeah, and tries to commit suicide. Yeah. <laughs> well, he doesn't try to commit suicide. He tries to think he's going to fake committing suicide by jumping into a bouncy house yeah, yeah. 40 feet down. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. And then he they test it with the watermelon. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, Email surveillance. I love this episode. I think it's season two as well. This is where Michael gets an IT guy so he can go through everybody's email. (laughs) And then he starts... A search, he goes, Michael Boss Funny. <laughs> he's, like, he's like so excited to see what people are going to say. And he pulls him up. He's like, oh, Stanley, love Stanley. He's a funny guy. He's like, I can't work because my boss, Michael, is an asshole. <laughs> and then he finds out that he's not invited to Jim's party. He's like, where's my Eva? He's like, wait a second. And then the whole episode, Jim's trying to not tell Michael that he's throwing a party. Mm. He tricks Dwight into thinking that it's a surprise party for Michael. And it's great. It's amazing. so funny. And then we have uh, Goodbye, Toby. <laughs> Goodbye. It's an important episode. It's a great episode. Because also Holly Angela, comes in. Angela and Andy get it, pro- get engaged Oh, yeah, yeah, Because yeah. This, is, this is where Jim was going to propose with the fireworks and everything. Mm-hmm. Because Michael wanted to throw the best party ever for... Uh, but, but the cold open is he's in his office with all the decorations and he's so happy. It's amazing. <laughs> All right. Uh, Benny Hanna Christmas. We'll talk about the Christmas episodes later yeah, on, yeah. but I uh, love that episode. Fun Run Part 1 and 2 is Amazing. super funny. So this is Michael Scott's Dunder Mifflin Scranton Meredith Palmer Memorial Celebrity Rabies Awareness Pro Am <laughs> Fun Race for the Cure. For the Cure. Because he hit Meredith with his car, <laughs> but he also saved her life because she had rabies and didn't know it. <laughs> so See so... Alfredo? <laughs> He's like loading up. Carbo up. loading. He's eating Alfredo before running. Oh, my God. <laughs> He's like, secret weapon. <laughs> He's like, he refuses water. So, so good. Oh, man. This is also like the first episode where we see like Jim and Pam after like he asks yeah. her out, like holding hands and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, gossip. This is where Michael wants to be part of gossip in the office. He's like, because he goes around, there's like nothing going on. He's like, I need to stir up some gossip. <laughs> and then he starts to spread that Stanley's having an affair. Um, Niagara Falls, part one and two. This is Jim and Pam's wedding. Very funny. I think the best moment probably is when Andy tears his scrotum while breakdancing <laughs> <laughs> the night before the wedding. Uh, goodbye, Michael. Very sad, funny, yeah. and emotional episode. Really sweet send-off to one of the most iconic characters in TV comedy history. Yeah, it's, it's, I cried when I watched this episode. It's sad. Yeah. It's sad. It's him saying goodbye to every single one of them in his own way. It's really, mm-hmm. it's really sweet. Yeah. Um, business school, super funny, where Ryan invites, his, invites him to speak at business school. In college, but Michael thinks it's because he's a great businessman, but Ryan did it only because he could get extra credit. Yeah. And he brings all the candy bars. <laughs> he's just throwing them. And you'll get a payday. He just chucks it off people's faces. <laughs> oh, yeah. He has the entire spiel with each candy bar. And doesn't he tear up one of the kids' textbooks? I think he so, He starts yeah. ripping out all yeah. the pages. <laughs> Casino Night, it's a great one where they're having the charity. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is the one where he wants to invite... Or they can't have alcohol or something like that. And then Michael's and Toby says they can't do it. And Michael's like, why are you the way that you are? I hate so many. I hate so much the things that you choose to be. And this is also where he has a dual date with Carol and Jan. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Carol, who sold his condo to him. Murder, which is where everyone's scared about rumors of closing of the branch. So Michael starts the murder mystery story. 
in that's Tala- a fun one. Yeah, Tallahassee. Yeah. Goodbye, Michael. Very. Oh, we got that twice. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, the job. This is the one where everyone's going to interview for the promotion mm-hmm. at corporate where Michael thinks he nails it because yeah. of who he is, but he doesn't get the job at all. Yeah, him when he speaks with David Wallace, it's so fucking funny. Because <laughs> compared to like compared to Karen and Jim's interviews, those go really well. And then when Michael goes in, it's like, oh my God. Well, Jim has the job pretty yeah. much. Like it's it's there. But then he that's the episode where he goes to ask Pam out. Yeah. Because she left the uh the yogurt. That's that's probably the best final shot of any episode. Yeah. Um that was the season finale, I believe, of season three. Yeah. And then broke. That's when Michael's broke and he's working two jobs. <laughs> and he screams, I declare bankruptcy. <laughs> I declare. And Oscar's like, that's not how you do it. <laughs> Beach games. That's where Pam confesses everything about Jim and everything and gets everything off her chest after running across the hot coals. Mm-hmm. And he gets stuck in the sumo wrestler suit in the <laughs> lake after <laughs> Angela lets him float away. Really good episode. Um, AARM. That is where... They are selecting an assistant to the assistant to the regional manager. Season mm-hmm. nine, I believe. Pretty funny one for the later episodes, seasons. Classy Christmas. That's the episode that Holly comes back. So he cancels the Christmas cancels party. the first one. <laughs> and then he wants to make a classy one. And then the finale. It's a very, very good episode. It's a great finale. It's it's the best of the last two seasons. It reminds you so much of the earliest episodes. The writing is great. The characters are great. And so it's a great send-off. It's hard to pull off a finale of such a long-standing show and a, such a beloved show, but I think they really did a great job with yeah. it. All right, let's move on to best cold opens. And again, if your episodes that you're thinking of aren't, aren't here, sorry, I did this today on the on the fly. Hey, you did, you did a great job. Thanks. Those are just some of my faves. And then best cold opens, I think the best one probably is fire safety where Dwight oh, yeah, makes yeah. the fake fire and everyone starts freaking out. I think this is the opening to the stress relief two-parter. Yeah, he burns the doorknob handle. Yeah, yeah. it's ridiculous. Like, Aunt Meredith throws the cat into the ceiling because Oscar's in there. He falls Oscar, through. Oscar, save him! Michael is, is like throwing chairs through the windows. It, it, they all think they're going to die. It's so, so funny. Amazing. Um, uh, best cold open. Identity theft where Jim impersonates Dwight. That's also a great <laughs> p- prank. Um, Bears beats Battlestar Galactica. That's a little blurry. That's better. <laughs> that Asian Jim is so funny. Really, really funny. It's a great whole spiel where he, they convince him that it, Jim's been Asian the whole time and, and Dwight the, just never noticed. The family portrait yeah, and family everything. portrait. Jim kisses him. Steve's an actor friend of ours. <laughs> <laughs> so, so good. Great prank. Uh, Michael hitting Meredith with his car is a great cold open. The time prank where... Michael fell asleep at his desk, so everyone sets the time and the clocks and everything to and dim the lights <laughs> to make it seem like it's 5 o'clock. Then they start, all start laughing, and Michael wakes up. He's like, oh, it's already 5 o'clock. All right, quit in time. Everyone get out of here. <laughs> um, Kevin's famous chili. Again, hysterical. Parkour. Hardcore parkour. parkour. Super, super funny opening where him, where Michael, Andy, and Dwight are doing parkour. Mm-hmm. Uh, knock, knock. What's up, dog? Where Michael can't get the joke right. He, oh, yeah, he, yeah, yeah, around, yeah. Knock, yeah. knock, what's up, dog? And he, he, can't, he can't do it. <laughs> Nothing, what's up with you? He can't do it. And then when he finally does do it, he starts laughing and saying, ah, I got you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, things, what Stanley won't notice. This is where, mm-hmm. where Stanley's like doing his Sudokus and or just not doing, he's not paying attention to anything. And like, and, and Andy has his shirt off and like someone, I think Dwight brings a horse in or yeah, something yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah. Really, really funny. Um, the injury, Michael burned his foot, great opening. Uh, the opening of... Toby walks back into the office. Toby coming back where he's like, no! That's that meme. God, no, please. No, no! I think it's, isn't it someone's birthday and there's cake and then Kelly's like, oh, I'm bringing a slice back for Toby in the annex. He's like, oh, that's a funny joke. <laughs> She's like, okay, he's back there. Um, Dwight getting the pumpkin stuck on his head. That's one of the Halloween episodes. Pretty funny. Now the conference room, cold open where... Michael's making fun of Toby. He lands a couple of good jokes about Toby. And then he says, if I was in a room with Hitler, Toby, Bin Laden, I'd shoot Toby twice. <laughs> <laughs> and I got with two bullets. <laughs> <laughs> Down in Tallahassee, the cold open where they're working with Saber. And then Jim stages like his room is a murder scene. And he wrote on the wall, it was Dwight. <laughs> Uh, the baby shower one where Dwight and Michael are practicing birth with a watermelon because Jan, Mike, Mike's kind of going to be the baby yeah, yeah, daddy yeah. of Jen's baby. Um, Dwight's survival food episode where he's like, I have the best survival stock shelf in pe- Pennsylvania, and he has to start eating like all the food. And him and Jim keep going back and forth like how many days could he <laughs> could he last? Uh, the one where Jim convinces Dwight or tricks Dwight to fighting himself. Mm-hmm. And then... Threat level midnight, clean up on aisle five, another cold open. That's great. Yeah, those are such great ones. 
All right, next segment that we're going to talk about is... <clears throat> excuse us, my voice is already going away. Just, just, a lot of, you, lot of dialogue right now. You got this, man. You got sorry, this. Sorry for all the throat clearing, everybody. Just bear with me. Hey, we, we love the throat. It's all good, man. Yeah. You're good. I know. Uh, best Michael moments, because I think Michael Scott's obviously the best character. George Foreman Grill, <clears throat> super funny. Michael Scott's Dunder Mifflin, Scranton Meredith Palmer Memorial Celebrity Rabies Awareness Program Fundraise for the Cure. I think Date Mike is so great when he puts when he finds out that he's on a date. Yeah. <laughs> he's like, wait, I'm on. A, this is a date. <laughs> and he, it's so funny because he's normal and she's yeah. into him at first, yeah. and he doesn't realize it. That he's like, oh, I'm on a date. He puts on the Kangol hat, <laughs> yeah, and then he starts like swinging the pool stick around. <laughs> he comes into the into, yeah, he comes into the bar with the hat on. He takes a stick and starts hitting the ball towards the girls. He's like, ha! <laughs> I'm Date Mike. Nice to meet me. How do you like your eggs in the morning? <laughs> But that's also where he meets Donna. Yeah, for some reason she's into him. <laughs> uh, prison Mike is hysterical too. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's the convict episode where everyone thinks that prison's more fun than the office, mm -hmm. and he does prison Mike. He's like, they're like, what was the worst part about the prison? It was the gruel, all gruel, all day, every day, and the dementors. <laughs> Survivor man, this is where um, I can't remember the, which episode it is, but Michael, I think he's having like a crisis, obviously, so mm -hmm. he goes into the woods to survive. And Dwight follows him with a camera, and there's with the camera's <laughs> office. He brings the camera with him, and he like starts cutting up his suit to like make yeah, yeah, yeah. I can fashion like a hat. And then it gets cold again, so he's like, "I'm I'm sewing my suit back together with duct tape because <laughs> it's starting to get cold again." Another great one is the the the, pa the care packages they sent to clients they were losing or have already lost, and then they have to talk to all. They go back to a bunch of them like, "We need them back," and half of them are like, "We already ate them." <laughs> <laughs> the turtles, yeah, the turtles, the chocolate turtles, and then also when he follows the GPS's instructions to drives right into the lake. It's a computer. <laughs> it knows what to do. How, How about that? Lake? I, I thought technology was the future. How about that for technology? <laughs> it's amazing. Safety training, super funny. Mm -hmm. um, Michael Klump, great. All of his characters are very funny. Hiding the new leads. That's a great so one. So he can keep them for himself. Because the salesmen are like getting too cocky yeah. and they're making too much money. Yeah, so yeah. he hides all the leads, then they end up losing them in the, in the trash. Mm. Um, what else we got? The roast where Michael Scott hosts the roast of Michael Scott and everyone roasts the hell out of him. <laughs> and, then, and then the next day, he's like on a swing set <laughs> in jeans and a, in like a, a jacket. <laughs> then he comes back and roasts everybody back. That's that great meme where he's like super sad. Like yeah, looking yeah, into yeah, the distance. Because yeah. <laughs> all the roasts were too good. I love Oscar. I was just screaming at him in Spanish. <laughs> um, the saying goodbye, goodbye, Michael saying goodbye to everyone. It's a great moment. Uh, when he's creating an online dating profile and he makes his username Little Kid Lover. <laughs> <laughs> he wants women to know that he wants kids. Yeah, so he's like, so that they know where my priorities are. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Lazy Scranton, that's the hip-hop video him and Dwight make for the newcomers during oh the merger. My God. Oh my god, that's so funny, that video. <laughs> Scranton, what? The Electric City. <laughs> uh, Phyllis's wedding, where he is an usher because he's pushing Phyllis's dad down the aisle in the wheelchair, but then as they're going down the aisle, his dad stands up. <laughs> <or> dad stands <laughs> up. And he wants to keep him down in the wheelchair. <laughs> he's like pushing he's like him down. And then he ends up just dragging the wheelchair <laughs> like sideways down the entire aisle, and then he tries to stand next to Bob <laughs> as the as the groomsman. Oh my god! And then he ruins the end where before they say I do, you may kiss your, kiss the bride. He screams like, "May I pronounce the uh, Bob and Phyllis Vance for the first time ever as a married couple?" <laughs> he gets oh it wrong. <laughs> uh, the local ad. I think it's a really cute episode. Which one's that? That's when um the corporate sends those two guys to come create the local ad for a commercial. Mm -hmm. And Michael thinks like, oh, we're going to make this. This is the script that we came up with. And they're like, oh, we're just going to get you waving. And then they end up <laughs> making their own ad because Michael fires them. Uh -huh. And then it's the one that like they, they make their own with like the paper ball. Oh, yeah, yeah, the, yeah. The yeah, yeah. It's yeah. actually yeah. a really good commercial. Yeah. And um, I think it's just a really good episode, and Michael spearheaded that. I think a, a great Michael moment is his proposal to Holly. Yeah. With all the candles in the office. It's a really one of the best moments of the show. Marriage! Marriage! <laughs> <laughs> and then the uh, water faucets go. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> uh, oh, speaking of the marriage, um, when he gives tries to give a speech at Phyllis's wedding, and he's like got three different speeches to give, <laughs> like opening jokes. <laughs> He's like, I like to start with different opening jokes. It's also the same thing happens when um, Dwight gives his speech at the because he's the best salesman at the company, and he goes, oh my god, and <laughs> he just keeps hammering it. But yeah. Michael goes up first to to do like a bunch of jokes. He's like, oh man, it's it, good up, uh, good luck up there. It's a d tough crowd. I entertain the man who entertained thousands. <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, the Dundies, great episode. The obviously. final Dundies. The last yeah. Dundies with, with uh, D'Angelo Vickers is really mm-hmm. funny. And basketball episode. I yeah. think those are all the best Michael moments. Obviously, I think every episode has best Michael moments. It's impossible to I, I got to say, I think my favorite Michael moment is the LCD TV on the wall in his apartment. <laughs> it's just so friggin' funny. That's a like, seven inch plasma screen TV that you just broke, babe. <laughs> Good luck paying that back on your zero, zero, what's it, zero pay and zero benefits salary. <laughs> your, your no salary and zero benefits, babe, or something like that. <laughs> but like, he's just like, when he pulls it out, he's like, I love that TV. He pushes it back in. I can pull it out or I can push it back in. <laughs> I love the table that he built. <laughs> it's like three different shaped woods. Just like, oh, did you build that? <laughs> I'm, I'm so bad at stuff like that. The beer sign. Oh, my God. <laughs> and then Jan thinks that him and Mike, him, um, Michael and, and uh, Pam, Pam had yeah. like a past. He's She's like, like oh, he, if you ever need trouble with, with your inputs or anything, just let me know. She's like, I bet you I bet you are. Or like, I can help you out. <laughs> But yeah, I think the TV, man, I think I, it's so good. I think one of the best jokes in the episode actually is when Pam and Jim bring a bottle of wine, and then Jan's like, oh, this will be great to cook with. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the most offensive thing you can do. <laughs> or what about when they go to the take a tour of the bedroom, and we, they learn that Michael sleeps at the end of the bed? <laughs> the little <laughs> the dog bed. Little <laughs> <laughs> well, also the camera's set up. <laughs> Because she films him having sex and critiques him later on. <laughs> but she's like, yeah, he just curls up right there. It fits like a glove. <laughs> Jan has space issues. Oh, my God. <laughs> that entire episode, this, man. That whole episode is the best we Michael should, moments. We should do like a watching party of, of yeah, that episode. That would be, be funny. it's like 40 minutes. It's so fun. It's so amazing. Every every line and joke in that episode hits. Um, all right, let's get to Michael versus Toby. <laughs> the battle of the century. So there's so many great moments between these two characters. I think the best is probably when Michael frames Toby for drug possession with the Caprizi salad. <laughs> I'm like, losing money on this, man. I'm losing yeah, money on this. Yeah, he's like $500 for the Caprizi salad. <laughs> <laughs> and he calls the cops on them. Uh, since when is it illegal to put Caprizi salad anywhere? <laughs> um, on Goodbye Toby episode when Holly comes and... Michael's doing like the goodbye thing in the conference room and he gets him a gift and then Holly walks in the room and he tries to hide the gift but it's, it's a rock. <laughs> <laughs> then he tries to like sway it as a positive. <laughs> no, he's, he blames on somebody else. He's like, hey, who did this? <laughs> and then Pam convinces him to give him his watch. Uh, the Bin Laden oh, yeah, joke. the watch. <laughs> what, what's your real gift? The watch. Oh, that's so sweet of you, Michael. <laughs> um, the no, no, God, no. Um, the line he says, "You are the silent killer, Toby." When uh, th- he's talking about the uh, the corporate dangers and hazards oh, yeah, 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 of yeah. like type like uh, carpal tunnel stuff like that. Um, threat level midnight. The scene where Toby's head explodes for no yeah. reason at all. <laughs> <And> Michael's like <laughs> easily the most expensive shot in the movie, but we it was essential to the plot. <laughs> it's nothing to do with the movie. <laughs> and it just like, happens randomly. He replays it like eight times <laughs> <laughs> from like ten different angles. Um, I love the, the <laughs> deposition episode. It's great because Toby's there during it. And oh, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I love when they're reading Michael's diary and it says, it's talking about a hot guy in the <laughs> office, Ryan, and then Toby starts cracking up. <laughs> and then, and then uh, at the lunchroom, Michael just slowly pushes his tray off the table. <laughs> and then when he has to have therapy with Toby. Yeah, therapy yeah. with Toby is really funny because Toby starts breaking through walls and then Michael's like, oh, oh my God, I, I understand. I see what's going on now. <laughs> So I love Toby and Michael and their relationship. So great. Um, Michael and dating. Michael and dating. So he's had, there are four majors. Majors and, yeah. and a minor one that I put on this list. So we have Jan, Carol, Holly, Donna, Helene Beasley. Pam's mom. And then the chair model. <laughs> <laughs> he finds out she's she died. She's dead. They go to her grave and they start. What are they singing? They sing like a Billy Joel song. Something like that. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> so, him and Jan obviously have the, the ridiculous relationship that, you know, we talked about earlier on. And then it gets actual into a real relationship. And then they eventually split up. Yeah. Um, but I like, it, I like how she gets him back with the boob job. The implants, yeah. <laughs> Jen's changed. <laughs> <laughs> he's with, he's talking with the girls in the conference room. She's like, I need you all. <laughs> They're like, no, say no. Just like, you don't need her. Move on. You got to move on. And then he comes back. She's like, he's like, she's changed. <laughs> she takes her coat off. <laughs> Jan's boobs are plastic. <laughs> Jan has plastic boobs. Um, <clears throat> nothing against that, obviously. Uh, Carol, uh, who is the woman who sells his condo to him. And I love that episode where Dwight goes with them and 
and they're checking the condos like wow these walls are really thin and then he and then they think that they're a gay couple at the at first and they're like it's a gay friendly community they're like oh well that's really nice <laughs> 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 um, Holly, obviously Holly Flax, and they're literally the polar, like they're the male Made female for each other. version. They're Made, Made for each, each other. other. It's great when they finally reconnect because Holly is forced to leave, and they try to do the long distance, but yeah, it and then work the out. drive over is really sad. It starts really sweet, but then yeah. it gets really sad and, yeah. and dark. And then they break up, and then uh, Michael finds out that she's coming back, and she's dating that guy AJ. Also, yeah. earlier when he goes to that office and, and finds out, yeah, that, but he also steals that document. Yeah, and Pam says that it's not over because she read it. And then when when she comes back and he ruins her t- her Woody, <laughs> he pours coffee all over it. <laughs> I love when she's like, "Yeah," and AJ's never seen a Toy Story movie. He's like, "What a loser!" <laughs> <laughs> oh what my a, god! What a douchebag! <laughs> oh my god! Um, Donna is the person that. He is the mistress the of- The bartender. Yeah, the bartender from Date Mike episode. And they have like a few episodes of a fling. And then he finds out that she's married. Um, really, really great little then character. Then Pam's arc. mom. Helene Beasley, who the relationship's great and they go get along. It's so funny when Pam finds out finally. He tries to tell Jim about it. Who He's dating Pam's mom. He's like, no, you're not. She's like, what color is her car? He's like, she's like, it's green. And the seats go all the way down. <laughs> <laughs> all the way. <laughs> he's like- <laughs> and then they tell Pam he's like he's like I'm dating somebody's mother in the office I don't know how to tell him and she's like who is it Michael who is it Michael who is it Michael <laughs> and then he breaks up with Helene on her birthday when he finds out how old she is oh my god oh that's right <laughs> then the cherry model episode is great because he's going through the catalog he's like he's like I'm ready to date and use the cherry model on page 86 as reference and then he ends up like thinking that they're star-crossed lovers yeah and Dwight tracks her down also, the the woman from the blood drive. That's a that's a. The good oh yeah, one. yeah 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 yeah. The glove girl. Mm-hmm. And then he has like the like the what does he have like a dating or something, in the warehouse they open up the doors. Uh, anyways, speed dating, speed dating, yeah, so, something speed dating. like that. Um, let's move on to Michael and corporate. Time to talk about. Uh, some of the favorite moments are when his branch is supposed to be shut down. He tries to stop it, and him and Dwight go to Michael. I mean, David Wallace's house, and they think they did something, but they didn't do anything. <laughs> They're like, we did it! <laughs> <laughs> um, eventually, Scranton Branch becomes the only profitable one in that great moment in scenes where uh, he goes to corporate, and David Wallace is trying to figure out what the what it is he's doing, and Michael has no idea what it is. Oh, obviously, when Michael quits uh, and starts the Michael, Michael Scott Paper Company, which I think is a highlight of that season. Oh, I think that, yeah, it's, it's what, so good. Six. Yeah. It's really funny. It's really great. Good. And then uh, he gets the dream team together. Yeah. Ryan and Pam. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're working on a poker table. Yeah. <laughs> the deposition is great, where he, where um, Jan's trying to sue Dunder Mifflin for firing her because she got the breast enhancement surgery. Um, <laughs> and then she ends up losing the deposition. Mm-hmm. And. Anyways, Toby, mm, oh, this is a great line. Toby is in HR, which technically means he works for corporate, so he's not really a part of our family. Also, he's divorced, so he's really not a part of his family. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> oh, man. All right. Let's move on to Michael proving he's actually a good boss. I would say one of the best one examples is the murder mystery. Yeah. Because everyone's panicking when they find out, like, they're unsure if the branch is even closing or not, if the company's going to go under. And then... Michael starts this murder mystery, and Jim's, like, super annoyed. Because this is when they're co-managing. Right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, and Jim's like, what are we doing? And then he, gets, he takes Michael aside. He's like, J-. he's like, Michael, this is like, what are we doing wasting time? And then Michael's like, shut up. Let them have this. Yeah. Let them have this. And I was like, oh, my. And then Jim's like, oh, okay. So he's just doing this as a distraction. I think that was a great moment of managing. Another good example of them in their co-managing thing is where Jim tries to put all the birthdays together on one day, <laughs> and it ends up being a disaster. And then Michael, oh, that's the Survivor Man episode. Yeah, yeah. And then and Michael comes back, and he's like, "Oh, I tried to do that one year too. And, uh, don't worry, you'll get there." Yeah. Um. Let's see the golden ticket idea. The golden oh the yeah, yeah, yeah episode where he puts the golden tickets. It's like a, a like a ten percent off your order, and he put like five in their biggest sale and mm-hmm. biggest client, and they ended up it ends up being a disaster. But and he tries to put the blame on Dwight, and Dwight t- decides to take responsibility for it. <laughs> and then corporate finds <laughs> and out. Then David Wallace comes like, "Oh, this is an amazing idea. Everyone should be thanking Dwight for making the, like they." They signed a contract oh for God. like for five years or something to be their permanent yeah. paper supplier. It was like a, a health, a med, a, like a hospital or something like amazing. that. Amazing. But the, the conversation between him and Dwight, like in Dwight taking the fall for him, yeah. it was amazing. <clears throat> and then 
Michael actually goes to Pam's art show and loves her art and mm-hmm. buys the office, which I think is a really sweet moment. And also, like him making the paper, Michael Scott Paper Company, and then making the deal to come back. It was it was great business tactics because he managed to take enough of the clients where the Dunder Mifflin panicked. Yeah, they did. And it's actually really funny when David Wallace offers them sixty thousand dollars and they close the door like we're rich. <laughs> <laughs> but they decide on jobs. It's safe. And again, yeah, I think, yeah, distracting the office from potential closure rumors. That's another great one. Mm-hmm. 100% that you brought up. All right. Wait, well, how about the best conference mo- room mo- meetings? There's so, so many good prison ones. Prison Mike has to be the best one. It's up there yeah, for it's sure. Up there. He does all of his characters in the office. So it's like Prison Mike um, and then uh, Michael Klump. Yeah, Klump. Yeah, the big guy. Yeah. yeah. Some and other the sumo stuff. suit. The, um, what else? All right. <clears throat> I really like PowerPoint. This is the episode where Ryan comes back and he wants everyone, and he's corporate now. Yeah, and he has everyone learn PowerPoint. He wants yeah. everyone to learn PowerPoint. And so Michael is supposed to learn PowerPoint <laughs> and open it up. So so he's, he opens up PowerPoint in front of everybody. And it's like, you're downloading PowerPoint for the first time. <laughs> and it's like, and the download time says ETA 10 minutes to download. Then Michael's like, it doesn't take, take about five to 10 minutes to download. <laughs> <laughs> also, we get the fav- one of the best whiteboard moments is when he writes, you miss every shot you don't take. Michael Jordan, Michael, S- I mean, Wayne, Mike- Gretzky. Wayne Gretzky, Michael Sh- Michael Scott. I can't remember which episode that's I don't in. remember what I wanted is. Yeah, it's it's really funny. Then we have ageism. This is where, this is a funny episode where they think people are going to get fired because of their age. Creed dyes his hair black. <laughs> But then he, then Michael holds a conference room meeting and he puts like portraits of old people on the walls. <laughs> and then Ryan walks and he's like, oh my God. <laughs> um, the screensaver hitting the corner of the TV where it's a cold open, I think. And uh-huh. then they're all like, Michael's doing a meeting, but they're all just watching the, the TV. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. In the corner. Oh, they're waiting for it to hit the corner. Yeah, and finally flush. hits the yeah. corner and everyone starts cheering. Yeah. And then Michael's like, I don't know, sometimes I'm just on fire. <laughs> <laughs> um, Jim acting as. The client, Bill Buttlicker, in the conference room is great. So this is where the episode where Kelly Kapoor makes the false reports of them getting complaints. So Michael has to do a form of micromanagement, what he calls micromanaging to them. <laughs> I have to do a form of micromanagement. Micromanaging. <laughs> because he, like, invented the word. <laughs> he has to understand what it means. So he sets up the fake uh, sales call with Dwight selling paper to Jim, and D- Jim become, becomes uh, Bill Buttlicker. And it's just really funny back and forth. I think a bunch of the conference room meetings for the party planning committee are really great, too. Oh, yeah, yeah, They're yeah. They're so funny. They are really good. Um, let's see. Andy creating the rewards program when he's manager of the company, and then they tattoo the Nard Dog on his ass. <laughs> but they're like, you did say we could pull all our points together, right? Then let's get to work, everybody. <laughs> and then he walks out in the, in the room, and everyone's like, it's like, it's like the stock exchange. It's yeah, like yeah. everyone's on fire. He's like, yeah, it's a little more energy today than usual, right? <laughs> well, everyone wants to see you tattoo your ass. <laughs> Do I create shroot bucks when he's manager? <laughs> he's like, you don't want shroot bucks? <laughs> One shroot buck. <laughs> um, and then I love the Dwight's emergency management chart. So this is where Michael has to fire somebody, but he doesn't know who oh, to do. Yeah. And then so Michael and then Dwight has this like billboard where he created like an emergency power chart where he's like, in this scenario, all the power goes down to me, and you'll give me full responsibility <laughs> to fire anybody I want. Give me the power. Do it. <laughs> do it now. <laughs> <laughs> um, want to do some Christmas stuff? Yeah, let's move on to the best Christmas episodes. Obviously, season two Christmas party, which turns into uh, what do you call the Yankee swap? Yankee swap with the iPod, Secret Santa to Yankee swap, twenty twenty dollar <laughs> limit. But then Michael, because he got Ryan, he bought him a four hundred dollar iPod, video iPod, video iPod. <laughs> oh my god! But this is also the episode with the teapot where Pam takes the iPod instead of the teapot, but then she ch- exchanges it. For the very iPod. Sweet. Very sweet. And it has all the sweet gifts in there, and he fortunately hides the card from her. Mm-hmm. Benny Hanna Christmas, I love too. This is where Michael gets dumped by Holly. I mean, no, by by Carol. And then um, they go to the Benny Hanna hibachi. Yeah. I love that scene where Dwight has to sit like at the end of the table. Yeah, he's he, like, what was that? <laughs> oh, he, she's trying to remember how to properly, properly, um, f- uh, <laughs> what's it? Probably like skin a duck or something like that. Yeah. He's like, hey, Sydney, Sydney, what are you going to want to do is <laughs> slit the it throat. upside down, <laughs> slit the throat, have a bucket there for all the blood and the innards and everything that's going to fall out. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, Michael can't tell the difference between the two girls, so then he, he puts a Sharpie marker on one of their arms. 
<laughs> My God, it's funny. He just gives her a, his bike. <laughs> Um, classic Christmas, that's the one where they have a Christmas party, then Michael cancels it because he finds out Holly's coming back, so he just has classy Christmas, and he's classy Santa Claus, and it's a funny episode, especially, that's the one where Dw- um, Daryl brings his daughter to Christmas, and yeah, they yeah. make a Christmas, Christmas tree and everything, too. Moroccan Christmas is a great one. That's the next one, that's the one where Phyllis is in charge of the planning party committee, mm-hmm. and she, she, t- she lets Angela only keep some of her, um, manger set. <laughs> <laughs> um, what else we got? Christmas Wishes is a good one. Season 8, episode 10. And Dwight Christmas is actually a really good one, too. That's a really good one between him and him and Jim, too, where mm-hmm. they, they break the uh, wishbone together. Speaking of Dwight and Jim, let's go over the best pranks. Let's go. My One of my favorite pranks is when Jim, it looks like he wrapped Dwight's entire desk and chair in wrapping paper. And Dwight's like super annoyed. He's like, well, this is stupid. And then he goes to sit down on the chair. It's just empty and he falls on the floor. <laughs> and the entire desk, it's all just wrapping paper. <laughs> Amazing. Uh, Stapler and Jello, that's the first episode. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The pilot. Then the Asian Jim, which we talked about earlier. Dwight Impersonation, which we've talked about. Oh, the Magic Beans is a great one. The Legumes. Yeah. <laughs> super funny. <laughs> where, where Dwight thinks he's like the ultimate tradesman because yeah. he starts with like a thumbtack or something and then he trades up to a telescope. Yeah. Then he trades the telescope for the legumes. And then when Jim pretends like he's a vampire with like the symptoms of vampirism. Oh, because the bat's flying in the yeah, office. Yeah, yeah. yeah, he pretends he got bit. And then like at the end of the episode, uh, Dwight's got like a steak ready to kill him. He touches Karen's garlic bread. He's like, ah, oh, man, your bread's <laughs> piping hot. She's like, Jim. That's cold. <laughs> Jim, that garlic bread stone cold. <laughs> the glare from Angela's crucifix is blinding. <laughs> and then all of Dwight's reactions to seeing all of this. <laughs> he, he, and then Dwight asks Creed, like, do you have a tool to sh- the shave down a broomstick handle to a steak? And then Creed's like, what size? <laughs> Um, oh, the Altoid mitts one where he, he makes the little click with the little tool and he gives Dwight a mint every oh, it's, time. It's the screen. The screen of his, yeah, the screen. The screensaver. And then when he stops giving him the mints, uh, he does the sound again and Dwight holds his hand out. And then he's like, oh, what am I doing? And then he's like, my mouth tastes terrible. <laughs> mouth suddenly tastes so bad. It's the Pavlovian study of salivating dogs. <laughs> quad desk is a great one where, he, where Jim takes him and Pam's desk to make quad desk, which is really just oh, a yeah, triple yeah. desk. Yeah. Um, I think he puts Dwight's phone under a quad desk, and he actually yeah yeah, it. yeah yeah yeah. Um, Gaydar, where <laughs> this is where Jim is <laughs> at the other branch, and um, Michael <laughs> Michael and Dwight call him to find out about Gaydar, <laughs> and then he sends it to him at the end of the episode. And he starts he uses it on Oscar, and then he uses it on his belt <laughs> and starts blinking. Also, the the Matrix one's really funny when he tricks uh, they trick uh. uh Dwight into thinking he's like Neo in the Matrix, and they even set up uh, the security officer as uh, Morpheus, Hank. Hank as Morpheus in the warehouse with the chairs and the outfit and everything. So funny. That one actually got cut. Oh, it got cut. Yeah, that's a cut one. Oh, it never aired. Yeah. Oh. I know what you're talking about. It's on YouTube. It's, it's awesome. super funny. It's so good. It's too bad because Hank was awesome as Morpheus yeah. in that. It's super funny. Maybe it was too long. I think so. Maybe it just didn't fit with the episode, but yeah. maybe it was a little too long. It was like four or five minutes. Yeah. That's but a great may- one. Maybe when they watched it, it just didn't work. Mm-hmm. I-, I watched it and it was good, but it wasn't like funny. Yeah. It wasn't that funny, I think. The concept was there, but I think just the execution, execution wasn't as funny as it mm-hmm. could have been. But yeah, that actually, that's actually cut, but that, I totally forgot about that. Um, let's oh, see. when he put um, his Dwight's things in the vending machine is a great yeah, one. Yeah, that's a really yeah. good one. Faxing Dwight from future Dwight, where this is where Jim uses Dwight's company stock header led to fax Dwight himself from the future. This is when he's at the other branch. Karen's like, who are you, who are you faxing this early in the morning? <laughs> it's like, Dwight, someone poisons the coffee at 8 a.m. this morning. And then he hits the coffee out of Stanley's hand. He's like, you'll thank me later. <laughs> What's the one where he makes, uh, he they he pretends to be the CIA? Oh, this uh, is, yeah, yeah, that's where they trick him into being recruited by the, the CIA. Secret, yeah, to be a secret agent. And, like, they get him a bus pass. Yeah. And what if we have <laughs> a helicopter pick him up, and then he's on the roof, and they're like, you've been made, destroy your phone. <laughs> <He's> destroy <laughs> phone, he just tosses it. <laughs> <laughs> that's a great one. That's a great one. <laughs> the murder scene in the hotel room is great. The Velcro suit's awesome. Yeah, that's, that's a, a great really one. good one. Yeah. Um, the telephone with the coins where Jim's talking about. I don't think they, they show it. It's just when Jim's, like, going through all the complaints that Dwight made from him. And it's like, oh, this is kind of sad. Mm-hmm. Where he's like, I, over, I put a bunch of nickels and pennies inside of his phone. Then every day I removed a couple of them until eventually he hit himself in the head with it. <laughs> <laughs> it's genius. <laughs> Let's see what else we got. Jim convinces Dwight it's Friday instead of Thursday. Oh yeah, yeah. Jim convincing Dwight that he smoked weed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
Oh, the the, the Benjamin Franklin impersonator. Yeah, yeah. He convinces him that's the real Benjamin Franklin. <laughs> um, let's see, the five hundred foot spool of wire that Jim wires to his desk, and then Dwight just notices this random red wire. He's like, oh, he's, he's just pulling to? it everywhere. Yeah, he yeah. starts pulling it out of all the carpeting, then up the telephone pole behind Jim when he's being interviewed. He's like, oh, he's a, he'll be fine. I made it up there. <laughs> Um, I'm trying to think of other ones off the top of my head because there's so, so many good ones. Those are great ones. But there's, yeah, there are a few more, but I think these are the best ones. I think a good one is the garden party where Andy's throwing the garden party for everybody and Jim makes that fake book of all the customs that you're supposed to do at a garden party, <laughs> like screaming everybody's name as soon as they announce that that weird dance that they do, all, this, all the silly mm-hmm. things that goes on during the episode. All right, let's do um, the most cringe moments. Let's do it. Okay, Scott's Tots. For sure. Dinner party. Is super cringe. Yeah. Uh, Michael pasting the photo of himself on Carol's skiing trip. Skis and greetings greeting card. Very cringe. Um, when Andy punches his, punches the wall out of anger and then he has to go to anger management. <laughs> and especially when he comes back, the first day he's back. He's like, oh, I'm Drew now. Oh, yeah, I'm Drew. Drew. <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to call you that. <laughs> uh, when Toby rubs Pam's knee after Jim forgets to Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, so cringe. I'm just going to hop the fence and yeah. run home. Kelly's fake pregnancy. For Ryan. Great one, yeah. <laughs> to get Ryan's attention. Pretty much every time Michael interacts with Oscar, it's always cringeworthy. Whether it's the basketball episode where he's like, uh, well, no, we'll use your services during s- softball season. <laughs> 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 the kiss especially, uh, it's, it's always cringe. Uh, Michael at improv after he doesn't get invited to the party. <laughs> always wait, wait, every time he's in, in the improv scenes, he always pulls out a gun. <laughs> and the other, get what? down on the ground. <laughs> Michael Scar, FBI. Get down on the ground. You thought you could get away with it, didn't you? <laughs> Put your hands behind your head. <laughs> Listen, what's more exciting than bringing a gun to a seat or something like that? <laughs> he does it every time. And then, and then he, he, they're all the improv people are going out, and they're like, oh, where are you guys going? He's like, oh, it's like a private thing that we all happen to know this person. It's it's, it's a private event, though. But you... <laughs> um, Michael spanking his nephew in the nepotism episode. Mm. Sink or Santa turning the Yankee swap. And also, when he's angry at Phyllis for wanting to be Santa, and then, yeah, yeah. and then she dresses up as Santa, and he acts like a baby the whole time. And he comes out as, I'm Jesus Christ. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, dragging the wheelchair down the aisle at Phyllis's wedding. Jim's tuxedo with Charles. Um, oh, I love when Stanley's flirting with the idea of going to Cameron's branch to work at Utica. And so... Michael and Dwight decide to go cause mayhem at the Utica branch. So Jim tags along to make sure they don't do anything stupid and they have like the fake mustaches and stuff. <laughs> and then Karen finds them in the parking lot, finds him sitting in, in the chair with the parking lot. But then they have the scene where um, he's like talking about how happy he is. He's like with Pam and he's amazing. She's like, oh, really? I'm so happy to hear how happy you are. <laughs> All the Michael with Ryan moments are very cringe. Super cringe. Yeah, they're still cringe. Wait, Michael, I mean, Ryan wins the... Uh, Hottest in the Office Dundee Award. Yeah. I love the episode later on in later season where he doesn't win that episode, but he's expecting to get up to receive the reward. <laughs> he's like, oh, oh, I didn't want it anyways. <laughs> and when he when uh when Ryan comes back with a beard, then he starts growing a beard. And then the goatee. <laughs> the goatee. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and then um during when they're waiting outside during the fire emergency because Ryan started the fire in the to- in the microwave. Ryan started the fire. The fire guy. They're doing the who would you do? And then Michael's like, Ryan, I would <laughs> <laughs> But in a weird way, because Jim did Kevin in a funny way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, uh, let's talk about Jim and Pam for a little bit. Oh, uh, yeah, we got to. Oh, we're already hour 42 into this. It's going to be two hours. Yeah. This is the, the most endearing, one of the most endearing parts of the of the series. And, you know, Pam always gets a lot of flack for, like, never really noticing Jim really in the first two two and a half seasons. And, you know, he's always been there. He's, like, the perfect guy for her. He's always been so sweet and kind to her. And showed her hints that he really liked her, but she always just never acted on it. And yeah. it was it's it was always tough for Jim to see him just like having to watch Pam with Roy, having to like, you know, try to date other people and it got him to the point where he almost left and, and he wanted to leave because of it. And then he eventually yeah. does after he he confesses his love for her, kisses her, and then she's still gonna marry Roy. But again, we talked about earlier, like you yeah. a lot of people when they're trapped in relationships, yeah. it's hard to get out of it and you know. You don't know what to do, especially maybe at that point in your life when you're like almost thirty. Yeah, like, but the, but the flirting between them is great between for the first two seasons. Yeah, it's, it's really, really fun, fun. because they, you always have coworkers that like you know there's a little sexual tension. You you'll flirt with each other. Well, like everyone, a lot of coworkers have like it's my work wife or my yeah. work husband. It's yeah. it's actually pretty funny. Um, but they also do all the, a lot of pranks together, which is super fun. They're just so sweet together. When they share listening to the music on the headphones, yeah, that's, that's a good a really moment. Nice moment. Which Krasinski recaptured in a quiet place. 
Oh yeah, with, you're right. Emily, with Emily Blunt. Blunt. Yeah. In the scene where they're listening when she's pregnant. Oh yeah. Yeah. You're right. Full circle there. Wow. Um, but then you know things get a little awkward because Jim wants to date Pam, and but he's so, but then he's sick of hearing of like the wedding planning, and he plans his own a vacation on the date of the wedding so he can't go. And then Pam finds out that he was the one that complained about the wedding. That's a kind of an emotional episode for the two of them. There are a couple of awkward moments between them here and there. Like I think when when Michael and Dwight fight at the karate studio, and then Jim like picks her up in an uncomfortable way for her. Mm-hmm. That's a little awkward cringe moment for sure. Also, when the the office finds out that Jim used to have a crush on Pam, and he accidentally tells Michael, and then Michael's like he's like the last person you want to tell a secret to. Yeah, it's amazing, and he just starts going around the office telling everybody in like the most like casual way like yeah jim's my best friend he's like he's like in love with someone who works here he's like jim's my best friend i would never tell a secret he's in love with the with a he's in love with somebody who works 10 feet away from him (laughs) bam who's engaged to somebody else (laughs) he's like um (laughs) um and then you know like kiss on casino night and then jim leaves comes back and then that's the end. And then the interview episode at corporate is when he asks her out. It's a really yeah. sweet way to end that season. You know, something we've wanted for so long and it finally happens. Yeah, he's like, you, you free for dinner tonight? Yeah, and then yeah. they're dating and he proposes to her at that gas station when she's going to art school yeah, and they live too far away. And yeah. he like, can't take it anymore. He just wants to, he wants to make this a done deal. And, you know, he wants to keep her in her, in his life, he's worried about like her, like maybe staying in New York, maybe who knows. And then he buys the house for her, and it's got that weird clown frame that can't be taken off the wall. He's like, it's essential to the foundation of the house. <laughs> <laughs> With an art studio, mm-hmm. and uh, then the wedding's great. Yeah, and she ruins her veil, so he cuts his tie. Yeah, it's really sweet. Jim's, sweet. they're just like the perfect couple. Yeah, but they do have uh, their ups and downs as a couple, especially in the later seasons. You know, I when- think that because they were so perfect for a while. I think the writers were like, we got to make it a little more realistic. Yeah, and I mean, marriages, there are always struggles in marriages, for sure. I mean, I'm sure you all, if your parents are married or divorced, you've, you've seen struggles, whether they're still married or not, you know? Mm-hmm. And so and it's an, it's realistic to put that in there. You have to. You have to mix it up and change it up. They can't be the perfect couple forever. Can't be a fairy book couple in every single episode. Um, but yeah, there are definitely ups and downs, especially when Jim goes to Philadelphia to make to start his talent agency. And so they deal with the back and forth of that. And it's different. It's different than when she went to art school because now they have two kids that she's in charge of raising by herself now. So they have ups and downs. And there are moments where you think they're going to get divorced, like those moments with the mic guy, the boom guy that like she kind of has like a feelings for mm-hmm. in a way and sort of like inserts himself into their lives for a little bit. But then by the end of the show, they're they're fully good together. She uh, accepts accepts him and 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 moves to Philadelphia with him to go to the talent agency and everything, and that's that's a really good episode because great Dwight, ending for yeah. them. And yeah. Dwight fires them so they get sever- yeah. severance. It's it's really nice. Yeah, it's so, a great you know, great finale. It ends up great. Um, Dwight, Angela, and Andy love their try tri- so love, weird love triangle. Super funny and weird. Andy's like he he never had sex with Angela at all. He did once. Did once. Yeah. So that's when the duel episode where yeah. Angela oh, the let, duel. <laughs> lets them fight for her, <laughs> and she loves it. It's like, like she's this, watching them about the window, smiling. It's the second time yeah. it's happened to her in her life, <laughs> and um, and that's when they're outside and and Andy's hitting Dwight with his car into the bushes. <laughs> it's like, oh, I'm fine. My my leg's kind of asleep, and then um, Andy's like she's sleeping with you? and Dwight's like she's sleeping with you. She's like, yeah, she's my fiance, but I think they've only they've only had sex like once or twice or uh-huh. something like that. But also, Dwight's sleeping with her too, so odd triangle. But let's do Dwight's best moments. Let's do it. Let's run through this. Um, I think one of my favorites is Dwight freezing Angela's cat after he kills it. Yeah. Sprinkles, <laughs> <laughs> because she's like, yeah, yeah, I can go home and feed it, and she goes lists off all the medications she has to do, like the ointment underneath <laughs> the tail and stuff like that. <laughs> He's like, I was raised on a farm. <laughs> I love when Jim and Pam go uh, to the bed and breakfast at his farm. At True Farm. That's a great episode. It's yeah. not a B and E. It's yeah. kind of a B and B. Welcome to what, the irrigation room. There's just pipes all over the walls. <laughs> and then obviously the the fire one is a great one where yeah. he locks everyone in, burns the doorknob, so everyone thinks there's a real fire. It's, Smoke. It's amazing. He's he's like, what are we supposed to do <laughs> today? Smoking's gonna save lives. He throws it in the trash can. <laughs> Uh, when he when he defeats the bat, oh yeah, <laughs> he wraps. You're it. welcome. He catches the bat in Meredith's head with the trash <laughs> bag, and then he catches it, and then she he, he pulls it out. She's like, "Oh, what the hell happened?" He's like, "You're welcome." <laughs> the coup, obviously, um, when he becomes acting regional manager, and then he becomes his own assistant, and then he. <laughs> recruits Pam to be his secret assistant to the, <laughs> the regional manager. manager. Although Andy's his number two 
um, on the surface just for looks wise, yeah. but she's secretly that power. And she's like, Jim always said, if, if if Dwight asks you to do something secret, to say yes to it. <laughs> to say, absolutely, absolutely I do. Absolutely, I do. <laughs> Um, the duel is amazing. Oh, I love the snowball fighting the snowmen. The, oh, that, the snowmen. Yeah, oh, and, man. And that's, a, that's also the Master of Disguise episode where he has a wig for every person in the office. <laughs> <laughs> I love when he puts the microphone in the mallard duck that he gives to Jim oh, as yeah, a present. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then also he has a microphone inside the pen. He's like, I wouldn't put my only voice recording device inside a mallard. I'm not insane. <laughs> I'm not insane. The uh, the speech he gives for being the salesman of the year because Jim sets him up to like study like Hitler and, and Mussolini. And Mussolini. And stuff like that. He's like, just be loud and just hit, and slam hammer, your slam fist. your fist. And then and then when he starts talking to the crowd, they they start like clapping slowly. And then it gets to the point where they're applauding him and it's like an uproarious audience <laughs> loving him. And he's like, just keeps hammering the the pedestal. <laughs> Amazing. Uh, the favors with bagels where he brings everybody bagels and he's trying to get favors, but then him and Andy go back and forth with doing favors for each other to cross them out. <laughs> Super funny. Um, hello, Clarice. Only you can prevent office fires. Yeah, we got that. Second Life. This is where Dwight plays an online Sims kind of game where it's called Second Life and he's also a paper salesman. <laughs> 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 I love when um, <laughs> it's the Jim's talking to Dwight. And they're they're talking about which which one is it? Where he runs a bed and breakfast with the devil. He's like he's like welcome to hell. Checkouts at eleven thirty or something like that. He's like he's like so let me get this straight. You operate in your fantasy, your wildest fantasy. You operate a breakfast a bed and breakfast with the devil in hell. He's like but you haven't heard my set sa- my salary yet. Eighty. Thousand. <laughs> oh my god! The entire uh, Dwight's bachelor party is really great. Oh, too. that's a good that's one. A yeah, good one. Yeah. That's an awesome one. Um, <laughs> the bazooka. <laughs> they kidnap Mary. I mean, Angela in the trunk. <laughs> Let's see. Um, weapons expert, where he has weapons hidden all over the office, and this is where he used the mace on Roy. <laughs> but the uh, the bachelor party, when the strippers like dancing all over him, he's like, "I would like a heart, the soup of the day, <laughs> and bread bowl for the table." That sounds and good. Like Dwight, she's not she's not a waitress. He's like, "I yeah, I, I can tell. You're I mean, she's me. telling. She's terrible." <laughs> <laughs> can I speak to your manager? <laughs> <laughs> An onion loaf for the table. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Uh, the karate fight versus Michael is is great. That's so so funny. Where Michael beats him up, <laughs> and then when they get off the elevator, Michael's like, "Oh yeah." Um, uh, the contract he makes with Angela, it's so weird. The like, they, yeah, they have to fornicate like five times. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Dwight quits and goes to Staples. I love when um. He, there's been a couple of episodes where like random women have been like obsessed with him. Oh, Pam's sister. Yeah, Pam's sister. And then the other, the um, the the tall woman, and he calls her um, what's what's um? Oh, in New York City. Yeah, when they New go York City. Ryan. Yeah, and she's like Am- obsessed. It's like yeah. Amazons. Amazons. <laughs> it's like a basketball team. <laughs> And, and then, then also because he prefers her over Angela because of her, he wants a he wants. He's like, big, I, want a, tall, I, want a, I want a big family. She's big, like, I want a bunch strong. of kids too. Like, no, I want big, big, large family. <laughs> 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 and then New York City, the girls send him a drink, and then he pours it into the trash. She's like, can't be too careful. <laughs> Thought you get me, huh? She's like, call me. He's like, I'm not gonna call her. <laughs> Oh my gosh! I, I mean, I love that's what we got. There are so many more, obviously. Yeah. But we're just trying to cruise through these because we're already yeah. at around the two-hour mark now. Um, I think we're I think we're solid. What do you think? Let me just. We have two more things to go over real quick. Okay, got be, it. We'll do it fast. Uh, we'll that's go over good. some quick. Pam's best moments: the art show, the painting, of the office. I love that. Her pregnancy is one of my favorite parts of the entire show. When they find out she's pregnant, because. Mm. Um, she's great at volleyball. Then Charles Minor has her go get an X-ray because she like sprains her ankle, and they find out she's pregnant. Yeah. Love that moment. Beach games where she kind of just kind of comes into her full circle and says all the stuff that's been on her chest. Steps on the coals. She's like, yeah. She walks over the hook coals. She's like, I walked over the coals. Even you couldn't do that, Michael. Maybe I should be your boss. <laughs> <laughs> Always assisting Jim with all the pranks and coming up with a bunch on her own. Super funny. She's just very funny in general. Mm-hmm. Um, accepting the role of secret assistant to the regional manager. <laughs> And then when she becomes office manager, you know, she's a yeah. salesman, then she's office manager, and she's she kind of lies about it and then gets it from Gabe yeah. and then, like, tricks Gabe into giving it to her, basically. And then, like, I love when um, Dwight buys the building 
and he's like has the conditions are ridiculous where he re-spools the toilet paper where it's only one ply and <laughs> yeah he's like splitting it apart the lights shut down and you have to have a motion sensor to flick them back on stuff like that um andy's best moments person when he first is introduced he's like i'll be number two at this office within a week he's like how am i gonna do that personality mirroring basically copying everything that people do and say. Yeah, yeah. Cornell uh, versus Dwight is a great episode where Dwight's going to go to Cornell. Oh, the inter- they have that, like, interview? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. We'll let you know, good sir. Thank you. Thank you. We'll let you know. We'll let you know. <laughs> Splitting his scrotum open. Uh, one of my favorite parts for him is the Kit, the Kit Kat bar commercial where you can't remember what the tune's from. <laughs> Give me a piece of that. Frosted flakes, <laughs> fancy feast, punching uh, the wall, being the whistleblower for the printer that catches on fire, the nipple chafing during the fun run. Oh my god! <laughs> oh my god! Um, asking Pam out with Jim's advice by <laughs> by playing the banjo and speaking in pig Latin and stuff like that. Uh, the Sweeney Todd musical is a really good episode. Sumo suit in the lake, and then I love when he's the boss and he goes to Bermuda on his parents' yacht. And then he comes back, and he's been gone for like two months, and David Wallace is like, numbers are great, everything's going great. He's like, oh, yeah, yeah. (laughs) And then, all right, we'll end up with just, I have one question to ask you. Do you think Toby is the Scranton Strangler? (laughs) Um, I... I, I think that Creed is the Scranton Strangler. Creed? Yeah, Creed. Oh, that's interesting. I think Creed is. That's, that's just going to be anyone. That's a, that's a great little storyline. goes on throughout like, several of the seasons. And I love- Because Co- Toby's at the trial. And he's I on think, the jury. I, I, um, yeah, I think because he's so excited about being on the jury, it's kind of like a giveaway that he he's not the Strangler. There's a bunch of hints that he actually is in theories that he's the Scranton really? Strangler. Yeah. Really? Really? That's great. But, um, that's funny. But the, I love the one where the Scranton Strangler is driving by, and then Michael gets like the the asphalt off the ground. Yeah. And then one one quick Michael moment. And also the the, uh, the the flasher. That's a good one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then I think the cold open where I forgot about where there's fresh cement outside. And so he wraps his face in saran wrap <laughs> and, then put, and puts it in. <laughs> he's like, he's like, I'll take my kids here, my grandkids one day and be like, here, here's my face. <laughs> it's just like a big hole. <laughs> All right. That's that's about it. We got we got two hours. Wow. And there's we so the much office. more to talk about. I mean, yeah, we, I mean, we didn't even get that specific. Barely scratched the surface, really. And I'm, you know, I, I mean, think we did a great job. Yeah. And kudos to you for really putting this, organizing this. I told you, man, I was going to show run this episode. You did a great job. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. It was a lot of fun. You should really go, go drink a Gatorade. I'm I'm yeah. parched. Yeah. I've been drinking the whole time, too, and I'm still parched. But again, I'm sorry if we left out your favorite moments, your favorite episodes. I doubt it. These are um, all the best. We didn't go in, t- in depth on too many characters, so we're sorry. But you know what's the best we could do for two hours? Hopefully, it was entertaining and a lot of fun. And we hope you love The Office as much as I do and Anthony does, too. So thanks so much for tuning in. Become a patron of the show at patreon.com slash Raiders of the Lost Podcast. Thanks so much for tuning in around the world. Bye, everyone. Thanks so much for tuning in to Raiders of the Lost Podcast. Be sure to subscribe if you're new. Hit the like button. Leave a comment. Find us on all audio streaming platforms, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts. Wherever you listen to podcasts, you can find us. Find us on Twitter, TikTok, Instagram, Raiders of the Lost Podcast. Be sure to check out one of these other videos right here for more content on our favorite films and breaking down all kinds of movie content. Thanks so much.